doctors and warrior let's go damn yeah Cheers, i'm excited for this one bhai there's, <laughs> there's a lot we want to ask you like yeah you can start with your first question <laughs> yeah, yeah, for it, bro. so I, i have a i have a question for you guys first okay. of all um how old are you guys <clears throat> 26 yeah okay. all of us all of us oh, all right so i don't know why this impression is out there that uh, mm-hmm. you guys are way younger still i think we look we look and probably. act huh? yeah. <laughs> more than the look i think is the act <laughs> we also dress quite uh 1920 how should we be dressing old. man like dressing no, i don't think it's about the dressing bro i think yeah, it's, it's, it's more about the conversation that we have yeah no i think it's one of those things where when guys are together yeah in the same room we and lose 10 10 yeah. years yeah. Yeah. right i'm sure you have friends that you're just 100%. like talking shit with all the time 100% yeah. also when you meet a friend from back in the day you kind of revert back to the age that you met them met in. them at mm. exactly so if i meet my school friends i'm back in my school mode it's yeah. like nothing changed nothing has changed we're all just saying but you want it to be like that because yeah. if you suddenly act all grown up Yeah, because hmm. then they'll only be like, "Are you kisko? Kisko mama bana raha hai." I have, I have seen you in your uh, in your We've best. Grown up <laughs> I saw this one post uh, like a couple of days ago. It said, uh, "Men need at least two boys' nights a week to stay happy." A week. You know, one of those posts that they yeah. post like research yeah. says, and you don't know what research yeah. or this what. This research was done by a guy who is not married for yeah. sure, <laughs> <laughs> and he wants his married friends to come and visit. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up forward? <laughs> yeah, you can say anything and say research says. Yeah, so. it just makes it more. It's of course, yeah, it's credible all it's of a sudden. Credible. But yeah. how many of these things are actually backed by research? And like, if it's research, mm-hmm. like even I could do some research. Okay. Like, do you need to have a PhD to be able to conduct research? Or? No, no, it's not like that. So research is a is a mindset where um, if you say. anything if you say that this glass is made up of brass for example mm. now that's your opinion so that is level 1 okay somebody's opinion is mm. level 1 evidence so now it depends on how credible are you as a person right so if you are a brass expert mm. then mm. just your opinion is evidence right i can count that i can say that bro the brass expert said this yeah But <laughs> I know that sounds real. <laughs> the brass expert. Yeah. Why is he talking about brass? Okay, that's a <laughs> <laughs> okay, <say> copper. <laughs> See, this is why people think we're not twenty-six. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, age is contagious. <laughs> But let's say copper. So anyway, that's level one evidence, hmm. right? But if um, if I have to prove it, then I can do. there are multiple things so there is a case control so i can have one copper one silver and then compare the two yeah. um i can have a randomized control trial so i can have 50 people comment on whether this is copper or silver and uh, switch it and say are they able to make the difference so these are levels of evidence yeah. so an opinion is the lowest level of evidence mm. because i said so yeah right yeah. so that's how parents usually talk to children If mm. the child asks, "Q," like I have told you, Anna, bus. That is level one. But that's a very bad way of explaining something to so- yeah. like a, a child, especially. Yeah, it's a bad way. Not necessarily because the outcome is wrong; they are probably right. Mm. It's just that the child doesn't get an answer. Mm. So, new age parenting is all about that. That talk to the child as if it's an adult and explain. Don't just say, "I have told you, do this." Tell them why they have to do it. or so let them great. reach the conclusion themselves maybe yeah let them learn from their own experience so that it becomes their opinion so in a way you're just teaching the child levels of evidence mm. like don't just trust me yeah. find out it's critical thinking <coughs> it's a skill that all of us need mm. especially in today's time yeah. when anyone can forward anything true ki whatsapp university ke time pe critical <laughs> thinking is probably the most important thing you have to know yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool though to say opinion is the lowest for form of reason no lo- lo- lowest level of evidence lowest yeah. level of yeah. evidence correct that's what i'm going to use the next time someone <laughs> has an opinion yeah <laughs> that i don't agree with fair yeah. enough like you have an opinion yeah. mm. there is this concept of n of 1 hmm okay so n is the number of people in a research program in a right. study so more the n the more powerful that study is so if mm. i do a study of 10000 people that's a pretty powerful study yeah. if i do a sample a, size it's a bigger sample size right. exactly yeah. um 
sorry I acted like as if I was so happy that you know the term <laughs> sambal <laughs> स्टडी फॉर मी राइट सो is intermittent fasting good now there mm. are studies on 10000 people mm. and that's another level of evidence yeah. but i will try it in my life and if it works i will tell people that it worked for me i'm not telling you to do it mm. yeah. but it's n of 1 i love that concept i feel like everyone should be a researcher for themselves right do n of 1 and figure out your life yeah, i agree with this cuz i've done it to some capacity in what the, with different things like even simple things like drinking coffee yeah. what what time of the day is coffee best for me should i be having coffee let me go one week without having coffee let me have one coffee one week like in a row as soon as i wake up 2 hours after i wake up yeah. in the afternoon and then you figure out your body and your brain tells you that this is what's good for you this is what's bad mm. and, and exactly then you implement it exactly so the more you read uh, mm. or the more you listen to more credible people mm-hmm. it just helps to inform you for your own n of 1 experiments right it is not gospel truth it is yeah. not ye aise hi jeena hai like those people have tried something you try it for yourself if it works continue if it mm-hmm. doesn't work just yeah. chuck it mm. that's why people like huberman have become so popular now yeah absolutely because he makes it accessible yeah right because up till now a lot of this knowledge was kind of walled behind years of study Yeah, and you have to visit a doctor to learn all this. But now mm. it's democratization of knowledge, so everybody feels like, oh, if I watch a human episode, mm. now I, मुझे भी पता है. And that's a great feeling to yeah, have. Yeah, now my yeah. body is a temple. Now I just take <laughs> sunlight every day, and you touch know, touch grass. <laughs> touch grass. I like how touch grass has become yeah. like an insult now. It's now become an insult. Why? So if like if I'm playing Valo. and someone is too good at the game i was like bro just go like touch some grass because you probably sit and do this all day like, <laughs> like talk to some women get some sunlight <laughs> talk to some women just sitting in a dark room playing valo all day <laughs> so it's that's, become a thing right so that's like uh, you're inverting the inverting the compliment yeah but it is a good feeling to be honest like touching grass i used to think why do they but then i every time you step on a lawn Yeah. Yeah. Effort, like it feels great. Yeah. yeah, because right now we think that we are overstimulated. Mm-hmm. Right? We keep t- telling each other that we are in an overstimulated world. Mein rahe. Yeah, but our stimulation is mainly cognitive. Mm-hmm. Every stimulus that we are having is just through our sight and sound. Mm. Everything else is imagination. We are yeah. imagining everything. That's right. We are not sensing anything. We are not smelling mm-hmm. anything. We are not tasting anything. so when we watch videos of say food asmr our brain thinks that there is food but there isn't any food so in a way imagine a pc like a computer having to process very high quality videos it will get hot right it yeah. it has a lot of processing yeah. to do that's basically what we are putting our brains through so brains are getting fried like with, with <laughs> in a way head. yeah uh-huh. because we are getting stimulated but the senses the input is only through sight and sound mm. so, so when not, you say yeah it's not real stimulation it's not real mm. so you have to basically create all of that stimulus whereas if you go out into the grass and lie on a lie in a garden look up at the sky all of that stuff yeah yeah we are we are getting real stimulus so our brain has to do less work right right it totally makes sense why it will be more relaxing for example sitting in the sitting in an uh, like watching ocean is watching the waves mm. i always find that very very calming yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah like you can go there feeling anxious and in 10 minutes you're yeah. a lot more peaceful you're just peaceful you're just relaxed and we all have our yeah. own thing some yeah. people will want to go to the mountains yeah just sit there it doesn't do anything it just makes you calmer slower mm. Or you could listen to wave sounds on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a DJ. <laughs> no, but there are playlists like that, there like are, wave yeah. sounds, the wave other night, sounds also. Yeah, the other night he put on whale noises, and yeah. we were just sitting there and having a, a conversation. I mean, it's better yeah. than 
like it's the closest thing you can get at home right <laughs> whale <Probably. laughs> you know there's probably just whales having sex right yeah, yeah. i guess <laughs> i've heard that they like call out to each other yeah and that's like, their mate and call out no like they communicate okay yeah and here you are sleeping listening to them <laughs> conversations <laughs> actually <laughs> really podcast, really 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 <laughs> i listen to really <laughs> rotting <laughs> <the> podcast <laughs> 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 oh man but whales are like one of those things that uh, no matter like how much you see you don't want to be with them no no you will always be <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah i don't think whale fetish is a genre <laughs> yeah though yeah. no, i'm just fascinated by how big they are like <laughs> no way it's all gonna <laughs> You'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> the answer might be yeah. It's a it's whale, not, it's man. It's not a genre, but <laughs> <laughs> the largest animal in the world. Yeah, you guys just don't get me. <laughs> sure. So let's talk about blowholes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some that would be a fetish for some people. Whale porn. Yeah, man. How will people you are weird. Satisfy it. I knew there are some fetishes deep that you love. Deep sea divers. <laughs> <laughs> Very deep. <laughs> so no. as a scuba diver myself. <laughs> oh shit! You you actually done it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, the the Not the whales. Yeah. No, I haven't uh, <laughs> done that. Yet. I haven't done that certification yet, but yeah. I do. Yeah, I love scuba diving. Have, are you guys water people? Water people. I, I think I'm better on land. <laughs> <laughs> But that's a I'm question. I'm safer on land, <laughs> for sure. But do you like swimming? He can't. I don't think I don't he swim. can't swim. Oh, you don't swim. I can't. Is that because of the the peen story that we? No, about? I think so. My parents put me in swimming class when I was very young, and like I have some trauma because you didn't get chucked into the over deep here. End. They don't really teach you how to swim. They just throw mm. you in the yeah. pool. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's the and traditional then, way. Yeah. And then I was just like, hey man, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Can maybe you don't. Me? <laughs> I'm drowning. <laughs> maybe teach me first, then. Yeah. Uh, You've so, never learned how to swim. So I, they would make you jump. They wouldn't mm. throw you, and I would try to jump like this way as close to the wall yeah. as I can. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. And then this one time, I almost hit my head. Yeah. <laughs> it was too far. And then after that, I was like, you know what? I'll I'll L- walk. Uh, <laughs> I'll, just I'll walk when I'm going places. Ah uh, okay. So I thought this was a fair enough question because. Are you water people? I mean, mm. it sounds really hippie, yeah. <laughs> but mm. it's a thing. There It are some people thing. who are just more comfortable in water, yeah. and some people who don't want to be. No, I know a few people who who go scuba diving, yeah. and like it's something that they do again and again. It's yeah. not like you don't do it just once and. Yeah, yeah. Once you've done maybe five dives, or if you've done a course, mm-hmm. then you have to go. Mm. It's something that it really does call you. Yeah. Mm. because uh, and i thought about this like there are a few things number one nowhere else are you in that kind of an atmosphere where you don't hear anything yeah mm. like right. if you are if you are 18 20 meters underwater there is no there's no sound yeah except maybe if a boat goes by you can hear that but it sounds really bad then mm. and you really start valuing the you know the beauty of silence right number one mm. number two all you can hear is your own breathing for an hour mm. imagine for an hour you can only listen to your own breath it's very calming it's very it's almost like a meditative yeah. state mm-hmm. and you don't move much like a pro- a professional scuba diver would maybe do one kick a minute okay damn that's so it. just floating most of the time just it. floating your hands are like this mm. you you have a watch here to tell you how deep mm. you are how much air you have and you're just like this and you're just looking around and you do one kick and you move 10 meters 15 meters because underwater you can move really quickly with just mm. one kick you don't thrash around yeah. none of that mm. so it's not like swimming at all mm. it's very quiet very still so an hour of stillness with silence you don't get anywhere else mm. where else do you get that when you're conscious right so you Once you get back from a dive trip, you feel calm, and that calmness lasts for a week, two weeks before life catches up again. Yeah. And after a few months, you get that. Like you need that again. You need that. You just want right. to go there again. So all scuba divers have that sense. What are you thinking about when you're down there? <laughs> Initially, <laughs> whales. <laughs> whales for sure. <laughs> 
Oh man. <laughs> I hope I see one day <laughs> when you're done. <laughs> like yeah, before my oxygen runs out. This is my lucky day. <laughs> Now whatever I say yeah. in this episode is just gonna sound <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. This so, episode is all about whale porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, like other than. checking that yeah initially like the first fight and dives is just about your own body you're very conscious you're worried about your buoyancy hmm. you're worried if are you too deep down hmm. are you too uh, superficial do you do it alone or is there no, someone no you you are not allowed to do it alone okay i mean you yeah, have so. to have a buddy huh. you have to dive with somebody hmm. there are people who do it alone but it's sort of yeah. not yeah. it's uh, not really Re- recommended recommended yeah. because anything can go wrong anytime So you always dive with somebody, Run and I usually dive in a group. So there are three other people. So you dive in groups of four, and if they're if they are friends, nothing mm. like it, mm. yeah. because uh, once you've shared that uh, underwater, you 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 spot something, you you tell them that oh look this is what it is, and there's an entire sign yeah. language. And yeah, you can't. You can't, can't they do this. Okay. This is all that we've learned yeah. from <laughs> Zindagi Nai. Zindagi Nai. Did you see the blowhole on that whale? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what that's it is. That's a whale, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's really, it's really fun. Yeah, but communicating without talking is underwater. Yeah. Movie. I mean, yeah, I yeah. feel like that's. People have yeah. You you develop this whole sense of how do you communicate with mm. with your hands. Um. So you can you can have a full conversation. Yeah. And once you get used to it, you won't even realize that you're not talking. Mm. So people do things like, you know, mm. like you pretty much act. It's yeah. like miming mm. underwater, and it's really fun. Once you get the hang of it, you don't even think about it anymore. And every single fish has its own hand signal. Okay. You know? Oh, okay. You know, so there's like the the crab, mm. and uh, you have uh, like hammerhead, mm. and you have the soldier sharks and uh, you know soldier fish. So there are there are different sign languages for every every single fish. Where do you do this? I did it. I learned in Andaman. Mm. Beautiful thing, a beautiful space. You don't even you can't even believe it's part of India. Yeah, honestly, that's the one time where I was like, you know what, the Britishers <laughs> did some good. <laughs> what have they built that place? Yeah, I, so I the mean, it's because of them that we have. Okay. Uh, so the Andaman Islands are. Actually, part of the Thailand group of islands. So when you go there, the water is nothing like Juhu Beach. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can tell that this is not part of your traditional Indian coastline. It's a very different thing. So the the water looks exactly like a, a Thailand island, and that is, in fact, if you look at the map right now, also it's very far off. Yeah, it's it's closer to Thailand yeah. than it is to India. Okay. So it's that far away. Uh, but it's part of us. It's part of uh, yeah. our territory. We don't need a visa yeah. to go there. Yeah. Mm. It's such an amazing thing. So I learned there, and then I've been diving in a few places around the world. I'm done in Croatia, terrible. Ooh, India Croatia so is much fine. better. Yeah, Europe diving is not that good. Mm. Um, Malaysia is amazing. Bali is amazing. Philippines is amazing. So yeah, I've dived around those places. Yeah, a lot of people go to the Maldives also. Yeah, I'm going next month. Very right. excited. First time. So dive, yeah, six days, um, solo trip. Hmm. It's really you need fun. you need these activities that, like, which are niche activities that people don't do, and then you have that in your life because other than the work and the stuff that you do on a daily basis, you need that one thing that you're, yeah. and you should also get really good at it. So a lot of yeah. people, let's say now play uh, pickle ball, yeah, and you need that one thing on the side. That you're constantly getting good at, hundred percent, and it it won't come naturally. Mm. Like mm. the way that society is structured right now, uh, your workplace will be more than happy if you spend all your waking time thinking about work. Yeah, they want you to do. They that. want you to yeah. do that, and there is a reward system. Is that why they send you messages like at eleven p.m. on the group? Yeah, yeah. so that you remember. You know, what? you yeah. might be having a good time right now, <laughs> but don't forget. But don't forget. Kal sube. <laughs> हाँ 9 ए एम का कॉल हम लोग 8:30 को कर सकते हैं एंड दैट मच इज इनफ टू स्क्रू अप योर नाइट राइट बट दे वांट यू टू थिंक अबाउट वर्क ऑल द टाइम दैट्स द वे दैट द मार्केट इज स्ट्रक्चर्ड एंड सो फाइंडिंग समथिंग फॉर यू टू डू फॉर योर सेल्फ हैज टू बी एन एक्ट ऑफ रिबेलियन ऑलमोस्ट राइट लाइक यू हैव टू रिबेल यू हैव टू से नहीं आई वॉन्ट टू टेक आउट टाइम फॉर दिस एंड सोशल मीडिया इज नॉट दैट सोशल मीडिया इज पार्ट ऑफ द मार्केट 
right mm. right so if you are scrolling on social media you are not resting yeah. you are part of that system so you need to actually rebel and find something that is just for you mm. and once you find that you will always be happier in life whatever it is it can be anything it can be something like uh, sketching yeah something you can do at home it yeah. doesn't matter as long as it's outside of the system mm. what is it for you guys i'm curious now it changes from time to time for now it's video games so mm. at night once i'm done with my work i want to sit down and play video games and that's why i usually play multiplayer games because you want to get better at it yeah. a story mode game you don't really have to get good at the game you're just going through the story mm. yeah. but with a multiplayer game there's a ranking system so you feel some it's sense competitive of accomplishment right? mm. yeah and you feel like you're doing something mm. but <laughs> other than that i don't know i in mumbai it's difficult to find things to do unless you're leaving the city to go and do like for us to get out of the house and like travel somewhere to do something it's going to take me 2 hours to get there 2 hours yeah. to come back that's yeah. half a half of a day gone yeah so it's difficult to find things that you can do outside the house working out gym yeah yeah Working that is, out is uh, that's probably the only thing that we do have left yeah. that we can do in our yeah, uh, yeah. in our own buildings but that's such a terrible thing right and you don't realize it until you go to a place any city in europe mm. the the importance of public spaces mm. right hamare liye it's like such a luxury yeah. Yeah. to just get out go somewhere whereas if you're say in london or any any even a small city there are there are gardens everywhere every evening families are just packing their picnics going there yeah chilling it's just a part of life touching yeah. grass touching <laughs> grass yeah but that's something yeah. i noticed in bangalore i was in bangalore for a couple of months and yeah. there it's a pretty big space and there are parks and stuff where yeah. people actually go for picnics and yeah. lay down on the grass i would do that like on yeah. sundays i'd go there and no just, you're so right yeah uh, i was in bangalore a week no like a month ago and uh, i was staying close to kaban park hmm. and i'd gone there for a walk There was a dog park in the middle mm. of Kaban Park, yeah. and everybody had gotten their dogs there. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, and even if you're not a dog lover, mm. you could just chill by the side and just watch, watch as fifty dogs are playing with each other and having fun. You don't get to see stuff like that over yeah. here. So Bangalore is close to yeah. um, that sort of European yeah. vibe. That's true. This city is like great for a lot of reason, but it sucks you in, and then mm. you're just like you get lost in the You get lost in Mumbai. Maya. Like Maya Nagari. People, yes. Especially yeah. for people who come in from outside Mumbai and live here. Like it, it will take you 10 15 years of your life and hopefully you make it at the end of those and then I think you can maybe decide to move out cuz you have to come to to this city to fulfill your purpose and leave. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think a lot of people forget that they have to leave also. Mm. Yeah. Maybe like they're in too deep. This is not a good point. place to raise a family at all. Mm. I don't think so. You know there's But a song called the Sunscreen Song. Okay. Um by he, an a director called Buzz Lerman. Mm. And uh, I would recommend you guys listen to that mm. song. I think anybody who turns 18 should listen to that song and they should listen to that song every 5 years. because Your perspective changes the perspective changes it's basically a song that was originally meant as a college address mm-hmm. okay. so there was another lady who wrote all of this and addressed it to a college bunch of college students and he made it into a song it's just one liners and it's just pieces of advice beautiful every line hits at some stage in your life mm. so you will go back to that song and say are yaar usne bola tha sahi baat hai mm. so there is this one line that says you should live in new york once but you should leave before it makes you hard and you should live in california once but you should leave before it makes you soft mm. and of course it's written from For an them. american yeah. perspective but i think that applies here also sure. everyone should live in bombay for a few years hmm. they should learn how to True. hard do hard work they should learn how to quote and quote hustle but if you stay here for too long then i think you might become that person and maybe that's not such a great idea yeah and you should also live probably in the mountains you should live in rishikesh mm. <laughs> for a year <laughs> yeah. and you should leave before it before you think that is all that life is right it's an interesting way to look at life if you can just stay in different places and build your personality yeah. Hmm. Why not? 
especially in a country like india where there is so many different kinds of places that you can go and live while having the same uh i mean va- if you can say values mm-hmm. because when you want to live in a place the values of the people there and just everything that has to do with the culture and the kind of people that live there is a big factor mm-hmm. so some people like living in places that are more conservative let's say or some people like living in pla- places that are more progressive mm-hmm. in india there's a nice balance of everything in many different places so n- I, for myself i would imagine that maybe once i'm done here i could go and live in goa for a few months yeah. or a few years even yeah because you get to choose what kind of places you can go and live while having the same like being in the same country yeah. not many countries get to have that like if you want to live in a different kind of place you have to leave the country yeah. all together mm. but in india you get all of it within the same country yeah that's true back in 2015 after i finished my md medicine i had gone on a euro trip by right. myself and i did four countries i did spain belgium Amsterdam and Berlin so the, basically the four main cities I was max I spent maximum time in Spain did Were Barcelona you single during this trip I was okay uh, I was just, just yeah 6 <laughs> months this was 6 months before my marriage oh okay so you went so guess. you so it Were was a, engaged I was so this was something that me and my at that time mm. fiance had decided so okay. she went for a trip with her friends to New mm. York and then mm. I did this thing <laughs> make of that what you will yeah. um, so my Mola point was my, my point was <laughs> six month long <laughs> bachelor damn, party that's... yeah yeah so it was like fun yeah. it, it was it really was I, my point was that when you go from city to city hmm. in Europe you realize that you have to travel exactly what you said you have to travel across countries to get a feel of a different culture hmm. right. because inside a country yeah. Barcelona Madrid Sevilla similar pretty much the same feel okay architecture is a little different but otherwise mm. the same here you travel 3 hours and the culture is different yeah right so from bandra if you say travel till pune mm. it's a different culture yeah. mm. you go towards Karn- the closer you get to karnataka you can feel the culture yeah. shifting every 3 hours if you're on a road trip the diversity in india is incredible true and imagine if europe was a country I don't think they would have survived. There's no way, right? But then we are somehow making it work. There's nothing similar between Chennai and Uttar Pradesh. Yeah. <laughs> There is n- nothing. Poles There's apart. Poles apart. Yeah. Like the way you think, the way families are structured, uh, the way you have your priorities and all of it is different, yeah. but it's part of the same country. Mm-hmm. So when you visit Europe, your respect for India just shoots up. It's <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, we here we just get along just enough. Like yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I feel like everybody is on edge. getting along. Yeah. 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 Like it can go either way like in any situation like you're just it's 50-50 like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why it's borderline no? like you know ki it can tilt to the other no, side but of see, you. with so much diversity and if it was any other country there would be like civil war at all points of yeah in India there's I'm sure there's been like there's communal violence and this every now and then but for the diversity that we have we get along very well I would say mm. Yeah, thank God for sports. Hmm. Yeah, sports and entertainment. That's what's yes. keeping us yes away from all the... <laughs> yeah, thank God for them. Because um, every time there's a cricket match, the whole country comes together. Yeah. That is true. Right? And Sachin is as adored in Kerala as he is in Delhi. Right. Yeah. And right now, I don't know if you guys follow chess. Yeah. But the chess Olympiad just happened. Yeah. And we cleaned up. Mm. right the open and the women's uh, we cleaned up we won i think this was historic it has this has never happened mm. before where one country was so dominating and sure a lot of the players were from south but it doesn't matter right yeah. like the whole country is celebrating yeah. so mm. i i found that really interesting that we have kind of given certain sports to certain parts of the country mm. um so i would say that maybe our hockey team would be predominantly north, north. maybe yeah. punjab you know chandigarh 
and that's great because yeah. if we do well in the Olympics, we're all celebrating. Yeah. So in a way, it's great. It's just diversification of specialities. Yeah. And then you all come together and you win sports. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. So we that is our superpower. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see that we are taking advantage of that. That a lot of that also comes from India as a country and the people of this country, we feel like we have a lot to prove to the world. Yeah. Right? Because when you're a country that's now come into the like main event scene. Like if this was a wrestling promotion, like Correct. you were the rookie who would play be like barely get any screen. Like time. you were the opening card at now some suddenly point. you're having matches yeah. with John Cena. Yeah, yeah. Now you're the main act. Yeah. 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 So then there's a lot to prove also. Yeah. And it's happening very quickly. Mm. You know, like India twenty years ago to India now is like two completely different countries. And what's amazing is that we are stepping up. Yeah. yeah. There is we had this fear that what if you get stage fright? Mm. Right? What if you get insecure? What if you're not made for it? But god damn are we stepping up. Yeah. Mm. In every level, uh, whether it's corporate, whether it's sports, whether it's IT, whether it's uh, creativity. I think we're stepping up in almost almost every level. Where do you think we're not stepping up? I would say in some aspects, I don't think there is for a country like India, where there could be so much happening, I don't think there's enough innovation happening. Yeah, I agree. Innovation is somewhere where we're lacking. Our biggest things are like... Adapted from the West. Mm -hmm. Adapted is, is that from what the West saying? and like the kind of people that we celebrate also. Like I'm all for celebrating successful people. Mm. Like when you're talking about the startup culture and this and that, where founders are celebrated, a lot of it is like, why are we not celebrating the Kamath brothers, for example. Yeah, I mean, see, they have done what they have done. They yep. they they're great businessmen. But yep. just like when you look at like this app, or oh, mm -hmm. this app is big. Okay, like a food delivery app, for example, where yeah. there's like so many of them. There is no innovation there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel like then we need to be pushing like real original innovation like we celebrate upi here mm. that is real innovation yes. like no one had that before this yes. yeah but like a lot of the things that have already been done like mm. yeah there are a few things that we should be very very proud of in india uh one of them weirdly is healthcare okay yeah. mm. so when i was in residency i used to think that our healthcare system is terrible and there are, if you compare metrics, it is, it's not a, it's not a great thing. But considering the challenge that we had, considering the population that we had, mm. the fact that today anyone in India can technically approach a specialist right. directly and speak to them about their health is a luxury that most of the developed world don't have. Right. So in India, suppose if you have a headache and you want to see a neurologist, you can search for a neurologist, you mm. can book an appointment and you would be in front of me, you would be in my OPD in a week's time or in a few days time. You can book an online consult and see them in two, three days. In Europe, in UK, you can't do that. Yeah. Mm. Or it would be insanely expensive for you to do that because NHS will ask you to go to your GP first. The GP will see you give you medicines and if you have to see a specialist, the GP has to take that call and you will see a specialist after three months, two months. Mm. One friend of mine, uh, she is an anesthetist and she fell down while she was uh, while she was in Finland. She slipped on ice, fell, hurt her elbow, came back to the UK. She is in the NHS. Her GP told her, oh, this looks uh, okay. Let me plaster it. And they did an x-ray and said, there's no fracture here, don't worry. The orthopedician will see you in three weeks. She felt that there is a swelling, something is wrong. Next day, took a flight, came here, got a CT scan done within one hour. Mm. CT scan showed that there was a fracture, got operated within 24 hours and she's now fine. Yeah. If she had continued there, she would have waited for three weeks and three weeks is a long time to not 100%. take care of a fracture. And this is supposed to be a developed country. Mm. There is something inherently wrong in the way healthcare is there right. and we should celebrate it. It's not that we don't have challenges here, but uh, I feel people here don't 
appreciate that i think they can get access quickly yeah i think it's not known to many people over here that how it works outside of india correct they don't know how expensive also it is over there like yeah. even though uk is still cheaper us is extremely expensive right like one fall and you're you're done you're done you can't yeah. even call an ambulance yeah cuz it's so expensive over there and most of it is insurance covered and yeah. insurance is a very tricky loop because insurance pushes up the price so now you're forced to get insurance yeah. if you don't have insurance it or healthcare automatically becomes inaccessible to you mm. and because it's so high health the insurance might not cover everything mm. so in the end you still pay a lot yeah. and you you need insurance on top of that which is a very crazy system it's like and double troubles like yeah. your it is yeah yeah and we should know that because there are signs that india might start moving in that direction mm-hmm. and everyone should know the like the pros and cons yeah. like there mm-hmm. should be a more yeah. debate about this there's a lot of stuff when it comes to this even like from what i know when it comes to like pharmaceutical companies like that's one thing that i heard uh, yeah. doctors get incentives for prescribing certain medicine mm-hmm. so like when they like now i think it's all computerized but before when you would go to a doctor he would write it and there's a carbon paper and they would keep a prescription for themselves and they collect those to give to the pharma companies that i've prescribed your medicine itna becha hai maine tumhara and they get like yeah. a cut or something yeah. earlier is... earlier this used to be a big thing in everywhere in mm. the us all over the place now it's much more regulated so now the concept of kickbacks and all have almost come down to zero because there is a lot of regulation in place yeah. and rightly so mm. honestly um now the way that doctors get associated is through a much more legitimate way in my opinion which is through academics mm. so you become like a what they call kols key opinion leader you become established in your field you become somebody who the pharma company can call on as an expert and then they will ask you to come and give a talk they'll call you for a conference and at least there you are um an expert teaching others so that way you are kind of rewarded for becoming an expert in your field uh, mm. which is how it currently works earlier it used to be very rampant yeah. it was just like tumne itna likha ye lo tumhara itna mm-hmm. i think maybe like that. that's why they used to ask us also which doctor has sent you like now that when yeah. we used to go to any mm-hmm. chemist aapko inhone bheja hai kya kaun sa doctor ne bheja hai so yeah. maybe Correct. they used to have records of yeah yeah this yeah. doctor but they have tie ups also so yeah, my, yeah, my dad is a pharmacist tie-ups. okay so he like he he tells me that okay these doctors i know they send their patients to me only like mm. some some doctors would just say ki you will get this only here so go here mm. Mm. so they have their thing going yeah. on and always like when there is there are buildings in which mm. it's filled with clinics mm. there will be a store like down down, down yeah. below yeah. Yeah, yeah and they are all i mean it's it's a Correct. business at the end so eventually yeah. um every doctor wants t- in their if they want to grow uh what they want to do is to set up a hospital right mm. right so what they want to do is to uh make sure that if a patient comes in they can provide every aspect of healthcare to that patient because that's how not only can you earn from every step so if the patient has to say get a nutritionist's opinion if your hospital has a nutritionist then you can give that service if the patient needs physiotherapy yeah if you have a physiotherapist you can give that service mm-hmm. no so not only will you earn from multiple sources which the patient would have otherwise mm-hmm. gone out and gone to someone else uh you can also reduce the overall cost mm which is a really interesting thing which is why corporate hospitals ideally should be cheaper mm right um and it is cheaper for the large large part in opd i think where uh, hospitals make more money is through ipd mm. so when a patient gets admitted Mm, that's right it is. yeah because then you're charging for almost everything everything correct yeah. and it's a of course like you said it is an industry the alternative is to nationalize it uh the other extreme yeah. which is yeah. nhs yeah and that has its own issues uh the truth is that there is no ideal healthcare system in india i think we get an option of at every level so somebody with at every level of financial status you have some option you mm. can go that somewhere is, yeah and 
small victories i think i'm one step at a time one step at I mean, a time as long as it's accessible for everyone and i would say healthcare in india is largely affordable at least for the middle class obviously it gets difficult when it comes to for a low income household low income household yeah. where if like they're hit by a sudden when they don't expect it and they need yeah. surgery then yeah. obviously it gets difficult yeah. but then i mean there's only there's what can be done like yeah I spent three years in KEM. KEM is one of the four big government hospitals in Bombay. Mm. So it's KEM, JJ, Nair, Sion, and now Cooper is also getting built up. Um, so three years in medicine in KEM has taught me everything about how the lower middle class and lower income groups survive. What sort of patients would you see, like, uh, in terms of diseases, everything? every single imaginable disease everything if you take a textbook of medicine and you flip mm. through them mm. i have seen every single case through in three years in medicine yeah. just at kem yeah 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 because on an average day or in an emergency you get around 70 to 100 patients mm. so at any given point of time i as a resident would mm. have around 70 to 100 patients admitted under me and this is every week mm. so right. if you do the math over three years That's you a roughly lot of see everything yeah like the rarest of diseases you get to see it i i remember once um, we had a team from spain this was when i was in uh, lucknow i was in sgpgi mm. so that's a super specialty hospital there uh, and i was doing my masters in like my dm in neurology and um, similar story uh, sgpgi was the tertiary center and we would get drainage from all of uttar pradesh um, we would get drainage from uh, even the northern states mm. we would get it from like uttarakhand himachal um and even from bihar so there would be a lot of patients coming in from all across the country cases that their local hospitals couldn't handle right so we would see some very rare cases mm. and we had a team once from spain who had come to teach us some very core thing in uh, a disease called myasthenia uh it's a relatively rare condition where you f- you find yourself unable to walk you can't talk because of some chemical imbalance in your in the connection between your nerve and your muscle okay now they said that they have done a study combining five major hospitals across spain and they did a study of 70 patients and we all looked at each other and we were like mm. bro we saw like 100 this year <laughs> of the same case <laughs> of the same case <laughs> so i think we um we have a lot of patients yeah. mm-hmm. in india and bigger sample size no just yeah. like i mean the population itself yeah, is so much is bound to be what's the exactly. craziest disease you hey. see disease oh, or wow. condition like you that was your house md moment bro <laughs> 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 oh wow uh, i can't even where do i even start it's a difficult question yeah yeah like to, to pick the craziest one would be So the most visually disturbing one was I had a patient when I was a when I was a resident in neurology and I was on emergency duty and it was around 3 a.m. I got a call from the uh, the emergency doctor saying come down quickly there is a 14 year old boy who had a seizure mm. okay so I went down that boy was uh, unconscious because he just had a seizure and i was talking to the i was talking to the mom and she said that she's he's been having seizures on and off for like last one year and he had skipped the medication they were traveling and they didn't take the medicines for a week and now he had one seizure and in front of me that kid started having another seizure Ugh. Mm. and i heard a loud cracking sound and his thigh bone came out of his thigh like what what caused that he just like his body his start... muscle just contracted and his thigh oh, bone just oh man that's brutal it was very brutal i have not seen anything like that mm. i've seen patients who've had a fracture because of seizure but i've never seen it happen like in, in front, front of, of your eyes yeah. we immediately shifted him we stabilized him he got operated everything but yeah these things happen in mm. in an in a hospital You got that reaction, yes. right? Yes. I yeah. got that reaction. So yeah. metal. <laughs> I mean, it's it's very real in a hospital. Things happen in a very real way. It's just yeah. and it happens very suddenly. Yeah. You can't prepare for it. 
uh, you can't prepare medically, you can't prepare emotionally. Mm. Like, there's no, how do you even prepare you for something yeah, like that? Exactly. Yeah. So you just have to be very calm. All right, problem solve, problem mm. solve. Don't think about mm. how can this happen? Why did this happen? Yeah. You don't have time for spirituality. You don't yeah. have time for anything. Yeah. See a problem, fix it. And you just keep going. But being in that environment, like 24 seven, yeah. like how did that make you feel all the time? <laughs> I had this discussion very recently with a friend of mine who is a therapist mm. and uh, I was, we were talking about trauma, okay. And I've had a pretty good childhood, mm -hmm. which is, which means nobody hit me. Mm. I guess that's the... Your uncles yeah, were nice. My also. uncles were nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, not too friendly. <laughs> not too friendly. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate tea. <laughs> oh God. It's just the right amount of friendly. Yeah. Uh, no, so I would, I would always think that, okay, this is the norm. Um, and then once I started speaking to friends and they started opening up about the kind of stuff that they went through, I realized that, oh, people have gone through some very shitty things yeah. Yeah. Right. Right, in this country. And in fact, it's something to be very grateful for. If you've had a childhood where you were surrounded by, with love yeah. right. and support, right? If you were, uh, if you were, if you had a safe childhood, that is something to be very grateful for. Yeah. Uh, so if that's any of you guys, anybody who's watching, yeah. if you have had a safe childhood, be very grateful. Like go thank your parents. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not the it's norm. It's not easy. Yeah. yeah. It's not easy. And people don't open up about this. They just, but they're dealing with the consequences of it. Right, right. right. So there are people who are behaving in very shitty ways just because they've had a shitty childhood. Mm. Right. So they've had a, they, a lot of people are dealing with a lot of stuff. And I was telling my friend this that you know people talk about trauma and I realize sometimes I don't really connect to it because I get surprised that oh this ye bhi hota hai mm. And then she said, weren't you in a public hospital <laughs> uh, for the large part of your academic years? I said, yeah. She said, tell me some things that you've seen. And I started narrating some of these yeah. stories, right? I, sh I shared one right yeah. now, but there were like 10, 15 that I could remember mm. off the top of my head. Mm. And she was just standing there and, you know, that's a lot of trauma. Yeah. <laughs> and you just think that this is all work, but you do get affected yeah. by this. And just because you've categorized all this as, ye to hota hi hai, mm. doesn't mean that you're not affected. So please deal with this. Yeah. It does affect you. Like you've normalized it in your Correct. head Correct. and because you're living it in that moment. Yeah. So maybe you discussing it and talking about it makes you feel like, oh shit, it's actually... The way doctors deal with it is through humor. Yeah, mm. true. There's no other way. So there is, there is this thing that a doctor's duty room um, should never... You should never be in it mm. if you're not a doctor. It's just not good. Yeah. Because there has to be some way for them to process what is going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you suddenly put a non-medical person there without context, it would not go well. Mm. Yeah. Right? Because they would feel, how can you talk about this? How can mm. you? There are people dying here. How can you talk about it? We know there are people dying. The whole yeah. point of us being here is that we are trying to... This is how you cope. Like, this is yeah. how you cope. There's no other way. There has to be some normalization. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. It is like that, I mean, for us also, like if you, if someone who doesn't know us or someone who isn't close to us sees us talk behind, like at, on camera, we're still a bit like, you sure. know, slightly mm, filtered, well mannered, but like off camera, if you your see, podcast is titled Untriggered. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But yeah. there's some stuff that you, you just know you can't put yeah. out. Sure. Right? And the way we deal with a lot of sad things is also through humor. Yeah. I mean, it's still not life and death, like, to be fair. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is and we'll still... <laughs> like, he... I mean, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, like, he yeah, went to see his grandmom, like, oh, yesterday, yeah. true. she wasn't doing too well. Okay. And so I te texted him saying, how's she doing? Or, and then <laughs> he's like, oh, she's better now, she's recovering. So I sent him a gif. Of, have you seen like Undertaker's <laughs> coming <laughs> up? <laughs> so like out of the <laughs> he's <casket>. back, <laughs> bro. So that's what happened. Like I was, I was gonna tell you all this. Like most people are not gonna like what I'm gonna say ne next. Yeah, but but go it's, for it. Man. It's good, our humor. That's a good bro. disclaimer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's our humor. So basically, uh, I flew down to Bangalore because my grandparents live there. 
and I went with my mom. It's my mom's mom who was sick. So we reached the hospital and they were like, only one person can go in at a time. So my grandmom knew my mom was coming. She didn't know I was coming with her. And I was dressed like this, like a black t-shirt, black pants. I had to wear a mask and all because it's sure. the hospital. So I went to her, this thing, and I was just standing by the bed. So the person with her, her caretaker, didn't know me. She had no context. So I just was standing next to her and I'm waiting for my grandmom to like react. And she had just opened her eyes. She looks at me and she goes, <gasps> oh yeah, oh yeah. And she, because she thought I was like the Grim Reaper or something, bro. <laughs> And she goes, and she's just like, ayo, ayo, ayo. And then I'm like, it's me, it's me. Then I'm removing my mask. And then she starts like just speaking in Kannada out of like, you know. Oh God. I yeah. think she was just like scared. Yeah. And then she's like, why are you dressed like this? Why are you dressed like this? <laughs> and I was like, calm down, calm down. It's me. I had to hold her hand. <laughs> and after I got done, I told my sister this. I was like, you know, she thought she saw Yamraj or something. And my sister's like, what is wrong with you? How can you speak like this? <laughs> I was like, bro, it was just funny because I saw her scared and then I had to like console her. Yeah, that's, like, that's oh, funny. It's <laughs> poor grandmom. Uh, he came you, yesterday and Amin was like, good to see you haven't shaved your head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, see, that's all of our coping. Uh, Even though yes. I was scared when I went there because, you know, you don't know what to expect. But that's, see, look, when something happens, something bad happens, it's happened and there is no way you can change it. Yeah. Like, there's not, yeah. When you know there is nothing that you can do to change it, yeah. then the only thing you can do is make fun of it so that it makes it easier for you to deal yeah. with. Yeah. A lot of people deal with Like it. people think that if you're making light of something, if you're uh, finding humor in something, it means you're not taking it seriously. Hmm. But very often that's not true. Uh, it would be true if all you are doing is making jokes. Hmm. Right? Like you're just yeah. haha and that's it. Like you're not actually taking care of your grandmom. You're not actually doing what is needed. Yeah. Right. But if you are going to step up, be an adult, do everything that is needed and then find humor to just make things more bearable Easy. for yourself fuck everyone yeah. you know? that is your coping like ultimately True. action is what matters yeah. yeah right so you do you do what you have to do and then you cope the way you have to cope hmm. one thing i think that i see in india is which is one of the best things about the, the people of this country they're very emotional and very like hard on their sleeves yeah they're yeah, very sure. emotional and they feel things mm -hmm. like they really feel things like mm -hmm. Indian people like we see films and we cry yeah like we listen to music and we cry we watch cricket and we cry yeah so that is such a beautiful thing but at the same time it like things like death make people very uncomfortable like joking yeah. about death is unacceptable it's yeah. taboo yeah yeah you can't be joking about these things but Correct. like there is a layer above that like once you transcend all of that then mm. now i can joke about it because mm. like i've become comfortable with it this is a, a journey that everybody is going through not just in india death has been uncomfortable for forever yeah right? we don't know what to do with death. yeah mm. uh, we know it's inevitable we know it's coming we have no idea what to do with it the concept of peaceful death is a dream Mm -hmm. This doesn't really happen. If um, anything, so there's a field in medicine called palliative care. Right? Earlier, it used to be only for cancer patients. Okay. Where you know that there's cancer. Mm -hmm. We know that treatment is not going to work. Say the cancer has spread. So they would give the patient to this palliative care team to just make sure that their last few days or months are comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, doctors are realizing that palliative care is for every, every disease, yeah. every problem. Because ultimately, there is a stage where cure is not possible. Mm. You are not going back to the health that you were in at the age of 30. Mm. Right? So your downward spiral has started. Right. This could start at the age of 50, 60, 70, whatever. But it, it will start. After that, how do you get comfortable with the idea that you are not as healthy as you used to be. Right? This is a big discussion, even amongst doctors, because even doctors don't really know how to navigate this. And I as a neurologist face this all the time because a lot of my patients have uh, something called neurodegeneration. <coughs> mm. So your brain is shrinking, Slowly. it's not working as well as it was. You get memory loss, you find it difficult to walk, you might lose balance. Now these are things that once it starts, the patient and the relatives kind of need to come to terms with it. Mm -hmm. Like there are things that we can do to postpone the inevitable, 
बट वी आर नॉट क्योरिंग एनी वन इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल इट्स बायोलॉजी इट्स एजिंग जो भी करना था वो पहले करना था वेन यू आर एब्सोल्यूटली फाइन दैट इज द टाइम टू टेक केयर ऑफ योर हेल्थ वन से डाउनवर्ड स्पाइरल स्टार्ट इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू पुलट बैक लेट बायर आर थिंग्स यू कैन डू टू स्लो बट यू कैन स्टॉप इट सो दिस डिस्कशन अराउंड पैलिटिव केयर इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट and i'm so glad that we are having this discussion here yeah because the kind of audience that will see this would be what in their 20s yeah. 30s yeah. even younger, younger than that yeah. they they have no reason to think about death exactly they have no reason to think about mortality yeah right now they are partying it up correct <laughs> like, uh, and rightly so i'm not saying that's not yeah. right yeah. but they will think about their future they'll think about their jobs they'll think about finances they'll yeah. think about investment also some of them there's no reason for them to think about mortality right but palliative care starts really young mm. this this idea that ha hone wala hai nothing mm. to worry there are some things i have to do yeah but let that thought process sink in i'm so glad uh, because it's very yeah. rare for a group of people like this to talk about palliative care mm. this and it's that is something that takes time f- uh, for someone to be comfortable with yeah. yeah so doctors will deal with it because they've just seen too much of that yeah. but for everybody else it's zero hmm. so there is such a contrast yeah. so if a you know if if, if there's somebody dying the relatives will feel like oh my god what is happening for the doctor is like sure. and you have to just present it as information that this is happening as opposed yeah. to someone who's just feeling emotionally Completely. just distressed so yeah. the doctor is full logic yeah. mm. the relative is full, full emotion, emotion. Yeah. There is so much discord. Yeah, That's why yeah. there's so much violence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because I, you can't expect the doctor to come and cry with you. Right. He has to get to the next patient. Right. Like right. there's someone else. Someone right. else is about right. to die, so I have to go and you know do that. It's right. that. So the the only way out of it is to expect that the the public would have more rationality in that moment, but also that the doctor will have more empathy. Yeah. Both have to common ground. Yeah, have to find some common ground. That's the only way this uh, doctor-patient violence will stop. Yeah, it's difficult. Like I know it's a difficult place to be because it's it's like you're the messenger, and also you're seen as responsible because mm. oh, in that moment you're just still in that mode where you're trying to fix thing, fix something that can't be fixed. Yeah. So like, what if the doctor was better? What if the doctor has messed up somewhere? Yeah. But at that point, it's like irrelevant. Yeah. So yeah, you're not gonna. We are not good as a species. Um, we are not good with loss of control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can't handle it. Basically, that's what anxiety is. Yeah. We can't. Whenever we feel like we are not in control, our brain starts spiraling, uh, spiraling, reacting. Um, simplest of example, I was in a traffic jam. On my way here, mm. right? I had planned everything. 8:30 थर्टी को निकलूंगा दस बजे पहुंचूंगा आई वॉज टक आई टुक अ टर्न आर ए में देर वॉज अ इट्स अ नैरो रोड एंड द कार्स हैड यू नो पाइल्ड अप अंटिल वट इज सपोज टू बी अ वन वे इज बिकम अ फोर वे लेन देर इज नो वे फॉर कार्स टू गेट अक्रॉस आई एम जस्ट सिटिंग देर हाफ एन आवर आई हैव मूव मे बी टेन मीटर्स एंड आई एम वेरी एंशियस आई कुड फील इट एंड आई वॉज जस्ट थिंकिंग दैट traffic makes everyone anxious mm. it's just universal yeah. Yeah. if you're stuck in a traffic jam yeah. and you haven't moved for half an hour you are not calm yeah you're like kya ho raha hai mujhe jaake dekhna padega abhi ha like you have to get out you have to yeah. do something you have to why is that why does traffic make you anxious cuz you don't know what's happening you don't know you are not in control you're yeah. helpless you regret All your life decisions till this moment. क्यों निकला? अगर मैं यहाँ पे कॉलेज नहीं गया था, whatever. You regret everything that you've done because you don't like being there. Yeah. You, you don't have It's any say. It's an uncomfortable say. spot. And you're stuck. It makes you feel like I why what have I done to deserve this deserve also? This. Yeah. And it's just like you're lo- when you say losing control, you're losing control of your time. We're like this time is very precious why do i have to be stationary sitting here sitting behind this traffic like i haven't done anything to get here yeah. yeah like it feels like a punishment that you don't deserve right and that really disturbs you even as kids like i remember one incident in school where i got into trouble for something that i hadn't done mm. and that's like even if i remember it after so long it it's a very disturbing thing to Like get punished for something that you haven't done. 
<laughs> and like it'll stay with you forever so yeah. when it comes to this i can't imagine people who go to jail for something that they have like yeah. that must be yeah. that must be one of the worst yeah probably the worst feeling you can feel uh very recently in japan yeah right I you read that i just got to say that yeah quite crazy there somebody who's 80 years old who got uh, who got released out of jail and he was uh, exonerated he's they found out that he was he was not guilty oh he was not guilty he was not guilty of the crime that he was in jail for for almost 30 40 yeah, years and the thing is he was on death row so that apparently like in japan that means you're secluded you're not even kept with other yeah. inmates so you're in isolation you're in isolation for like almost the whole time <laughs> which is quite that scary that is like bro. one of the worst things you can do to a person right to isolate him yeah. in isolation yeah, yeah. yeah. isolation really messes up your brain mm. which is why i i believe that um, the num- amount of anxiety cases are going up because in a way i think we are all in isolation mm. more and more at least more so than ever before right we are all in these little match boxes inside little cubes inside buildings um we are not we are not really connecting to a lot of people Uh, all the connection is virtual so it's not real again then it's not yeah it's not real because there's no there's no space for any deeper connections mm. you know what a deep connection feels yeah. like yeah. right we've all had that deep connection had so <laughs> and uh, if you're lucky you have but it's not <laughs> it's not, not real <laughs> oh, <come on>. <laughs> <laughs> no it's it, it's a real thing and if you've had a deep connection you know what superficial connections feel like yeah. true and you might be you might be having instagram mes- uh, message conversations with 100 people but tell me how many of them are deep mm. yeah and how many of them are memes yeah right so it's you are lonely like it that is social isolation is a thing and it's it definitely reduces your resilience you can't you don't have enough strength now to power through all the challenges that life is throwing at you yeah the thing you said about the interactions which are online not being real is so real <laughs> 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 because uh, like this even when i'm talking to a girl mm-hmm. online mm-hmm. it's the conversation is so fabricated because i'm constantly thinking of the smartest thing to say sure. yeah. or the funniest thing to say and i have unlimited time to come up with that like joke joke or line or the next message which in real life interactions aren't like that you don't get time to think about okay. what you're going to say you it's can't like, leave somebody on scene yeah in, in a bar you are just like in person you are just like, like sitting <laughs> sitting there and <laughs> you're not thinking and then you just walk away yeah. and come back after a while and say what you were going you to can't say. huddle up with your friend <laughs> and come back and then there's dynamics like that also you know when you leave someone on scene and then come back you're making them think about you more cuz they're like why why did he leave me on mm. scene and like what what is this supposed to mean power dynamic yeah, yeah and it's so games. messed up yeah. and it's the, these games are something that everyone plays with each other but i don't think it's meant to be like that um so mating games have always existed right they've just evolved over it's time it's just digital now it's just digital now uh, so i would say that the rules haven't changed maybe the mechanics has changed mm. yeah uh, but dating games have always existed i i read this paper uh which was written around 30 years ago on the 100 signals that a woman can show at a uh at a dance mm-hmm. so this english ballrooms there would be there would be people mingling yeah. and then uh ladies would come and then somebody would go up to them and say can i have you for the next dance and then the lady would say yes you can and that used to be their mating game mm. right and somebody wrote a paper about the 100 signals at different levels of intensity mm. of how a woman can signal that yes she is interested because of course she's not going to come out and say that bro you and me yeah. Yeah. we are on like go to nahi hota so there are things like <laughs> well, looking up and looking down mm. like eye contact for a second yeah a very high level signal was supposed to be dropping a handkerchief okay <laughs> so oh. that the guy can the come, guy can come pick, pick, it pick it up you dropped this yeah. Yeah. oh thank you kind sir <laughs> but it's it's just there right it's just at different levels now yeah. it's posting a thirst trap <laughs> the guy has to reply to it <laughs> yeah, like a story <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe it's just maybe we have become <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean the 
<laughs> the language has changed. Yeah. The words have changed, but the language hasn't. Yeah. Sort of. Mm-hmm. Now it's just become less subtle, I think. Yeah. yeah. Now it's just now very it's just, direct. What is drooling? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Can you be more obvious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, guys, straight up comment. Fire. Fire is fine. Fire, fire is, is still. still fi- but that also, to some extent, like, someone has posted a picture of themselves. Yeah. Like showing their appearance and whatever, and you feel or like this is fire. Mm. Like wow, <laughs> I love the confidence of somebody who puts two fire emojis uh, under the photo of somebody that he likes and expects that bus. That person. <laughs> this yeah. is going this to is change my. This is the move. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so weird. Like even okay, maybe someone that personally knows you that is still a signal. Right? That oh, yeah. I find you attractive. Correct. This is how I'm showing it. Mm. Right. But like when guys comment on the like Janvi Kapoor's pictures, <laughs> like what is what is going on in the head of that person? Like I don't I will never understand it. Yeah. Probably okay. not a lot. Maybe they're just they just want to say something because they've seen it and they just want to say something. That about I think it. is just someone who's hopeful. No I don't think they're hopeful. They, they also. Have no, no, hope. no, no. How do, but the thing is, some of them are so deluded where they know where they don't know that it's not going to be possible. They they think they have a shot. Um, yeah, by maybe. Commenting. No, I don't. Th- I don't think they've even yeah. thought till there. I think it's a very instinctive response. First thoughts, hmm. like, sort of like how wolf whistling used yeah. to be a thing. It's not like you're hoping that oh this will close the deal, but you see some you see someone you find attractive. Your body has a biological reaction of, yeah. oh, this is somebody who's attractive. Mm. Now you have that thought in you. Now you can do whatever you want with that thought. Okay. A mature response is to do nothing. Yeah, mm. just move right? on. To move on. Like, sure, attractive person, I thought that they were attractive. Now, just because I thought it does not mean that I have to tell them. Mm. Or act on it. Or act it. on it. Yeah. I can just, that's yeah. fine. That's it's It's a good thing, fine. But if you can't have that control... And you think that every thought needs to be followed by an action. Mm. That is when people act as pervs. Yeah. Because they don't have that self-control that not all act- not all thought needs to be followed by an action. Yeah. Mm. So then they will whistle. Then they will leave a comment. Then they will, or, you know, do crazier shit. Yeah. Because they don't have that thought action. There's like one disconnect. level of, like one barrier which is missing, essentially. Correct, mm. of control. Because that thought, I don't think is in your control. Mm. If you find someone attractive, you finding them attractive is not in your control. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's just instinctive. Sure. This is what I tell my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and that's absolutely fair. Do you act on it? <laughs> that's, that's where you draw the line. That's what your girlfriend needs yeah. to tell you. <laughs> no, but, I'm like, but I'm not doing anything now. I just, uh-huh. I just commented fire emoji. Oh. <laughs> Under Janvi Kapoor's photos. I just liked her picture. Not a big deal. Yeah. No, that is an action. <laughs> yeah, that is an action. <laughs> if you have a thought, nobody would even know about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they know, that means you acted upon it. Even right. a change in facial expression is an act. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that is levels of control. Right. So if you have a high level of control, nobody would know. Nobody mm-hmm. needs to know. Mm-hmm. You finding someone attractive is not a world changing event. Correct. <laughs> you don't need to take it that seriously. It's yeah. fine. It's fine to find someone attractive. Yeah. You don't need to feel guilt over it. You don't need to have any kind of thought on top of that thought. Mm-hmm. Right. The problem happens when people are afraid of their own self-control. So then they feel like, I have to act on it. Because yeah. what if I have this thought? What if I do something? It's better to act on it right now. Like, kar diya, chalo, move on. Hmm. So it it's comes from hmm. there. Got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> nothing personal, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lesson to a lot of people, I'm sure, dude. Sure, I think it's yeah. something that every... Uh, everyone goes through it. At least every boy would definitely go through this journey because you're not taught this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like who will sit you down when you are uh, 14 years old and say, bro, these are the things that you're going to go through in life. Hmm. Like you will find someone attractive, but you need to understand that you don't have to react. Who can tell you? I think but, they're doing the job here. Yeah. I, sure. Yeah. I feel like this education is important. Yeah. It is necessary. Right. And I feel girls do get that education from each other mm-hmm. because they need to. Girls would talk to each other and say that, listen, this is risky. Don't go to this place. Uh, if a guy is talking to you, then these are the things you have to be careful about. Because there is more 
to be worried about mm. so i think that comes from a place where with girls these things are associated with, with danger yeah mm. like for a girl it can go south very fast yes yeah so even if they're not told your body tells you when you're like when there is a chance for risk or danger yeah. like most people they just feel that so i think that's where it comes from whereas for guys it's usually there's no risk when it comes to talking to a girl or like having an interaction with a girl like obviously it has detrimental things that can happen in your life in us on a social level mm. where if you come across as creepy that could make things very bad for you but yeah. you're not in any sort of physical yeah harm. yeah most yeah. of the time most of the time yeah. sure unless like a older brother wants to come and beat you up or mm. something but mm. that is also very rare yeah so the, the problem is also that we are thinking about everything from the economics of physical injury hmm. right which is such an animal thing to do hmm. like if you think about it yeah. ki acha koi mujhe peetega kya hmm. nahi na to main kar sakta hmm. like yeah. what are we doing yeah. <laughs> right so if you're thinking about from that perspective then you're acting like an animal hmm. and that's the message that we should put out the if the only thing stopping you from be- becoming a creep is that the girl Physical has an elder brother yeah. Yeah. bro then let's not think about you as a human being right if you're not yeah. going to act like a human mm. being let's right. not think about you like a human right. being right but they they don't want that right we all want to be treated like a human being yeah. so let's have that expectation yeah. that physical injury is not our bar <laughs> yeah. right what i think we should do as uh, guys of every generation is we need to talk to each other a lot more yeah i more and more when i think about this i realize this is where we kind of mess up because all the conversations that guys have with each other is about how to get girls mm. or what is happening in your relationship what all of that stuff yeah. mm. very rarely do we talk about hey how do we make create more safe spaces let's be honest we never have that conversation if it's just a bunch of guys sitting with yeah. each other because why it's uncomfortable and there's always those two guys in every group who you know can be problematic <laughs> who you know has made <laughs> some girl feel unsafe abhi now who will bring that up who will confront abhi rehne dena the only way move, to move forward is to have those conversations mm. like you got to have a little bit of uncomfortable conversations with yeah. your own friends yeah. just guys like don't even have a girl present yeah it's actually not about them the problem is that we only have these conversations when there's a girl present Mm. but it's not about them it's actually about us it's about yeah. us growing it's about us becoming better about, about us becoming better men about having more self control yeah. and then that will help us everywhere yeah forget about flirting and all that it will help us in our work everywhere a lot of the times it's just like those guys their intention isn't to make someone uncomfortable it's just that they're unaware about a lot of things and that could come from anywhere some yeah. people have had different childhood some people yeah. have grown up in a different place altogether where maybe this was normal or yeah. this was okay yeah. Yeah. and now in this setting like you can tell someone has become uncomfortable or they could potentially it's just easier to say ki you know this is not how matlab exactly bhai aisa mat kar correct and be you can approach it with love also it doesn't have to be a confrontation ki bhai tune aisa kaise bol diya hmm. yeah. like you know the, i felt like when you said this it wasn't cool yeah and this is why i think it wasn't cool hmm. and you can also tell them ki i get what where you're coming from but you have to understand that maybe she won't yeah think about it like yeah. that so yeah. and it has to come from a place of love yeah there is everyone wants safety so there's no difference between girls boys men yeah. women everyone wants safety So if you confront another guy then essentially what you're doing is you're not making him feel safe either in yeah. that conversation True. so now he will get confrontational and then there's going to be no output from that conversation yeah you know if somebody comes to me and says bro tu ne aisa kaisa kiya like like whoa whoa relax no, tell no, me you are also going to try to then that's a different confrontation a, altogether exactly like, then it just, just escalates into yeah. a whole other space yeah and it makes you like opposed to learning in that moment because if it's a going to be a learning moment you have to it ha- there ha- needs to be love when someone comes and tells you don't do this then oh, you want to rebel also to some exactly. extent mm. so. like we have to remember what is the purpose is the purpose growth 
or is the purpose punishment mm. right there has to be that clear idea mm. too often if somebody messes up we directly go to punishment right it's not helping if the purpose is growth we have to figure out how can we create a safe space for growth to happen right so i can tell the difference when somebody is out to punish versus if somebody is out to help you grow right we've all been there we've all had yeah. good teachers and bad teachers hmm. you know there are teachers who will be like just come and hit you hmm. be like kar 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 yeah. kahan pe padhte hai yaar hum log fir yeah hmm. whereas teachers who make you want to try harder yeah. like try to make get their validation yeah. so that's a good teacher because hmm. they give you that safe space that's what we all want so that's what we need to create for each other uh, even with other guys that's the way forward yeah Oh, wow, we've come a long way from whale porn. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we suddenly grew up. <laughs> this is what conversation. So we can, we can go back. A, yeah. So let's let's talk can about we? some fun stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, I have I have a I have a question. Like, yeah. <laughs> you've studied the brain. Yes. Okay. Let's say let's say you're in Amsterdam uh. and you happen to enter a coffee shop. Sure. Okay. And you decide to smoke a joint. Sure. What? Is happening in my brain, my brain, in your whoever was whoever was smoking. <laughs> Suddenly, reality <laughs> came out. <laughs> Slip of tongue. Slip what's, of tongue. What's happening in my brain when hmm. I'm smoking a joint? Hmm. Uh, do you want the chemistry of it? I, like whatever you can. Like, हमको जितना समझ में आएगा. Sure. Uh, when you smoke a joint, it has cannabis. Cannabis acts on certain receptors in your brain called CB1 and CB2. Hmm. Beautiful thing. is that we discovered cb1 cb2 receptors after people started smoking cannabis but it turned out that those receptors were already there in the brain right now why would there be receptors in the brain for a chemical that you some people sometimes smoke right, right. so that was a very interesting question for scientists and so the answer is that probably there is something already there in the body that acts on those receptors hmm and that is when people found out that there is a chemical in the brain called anandamide which acts on those receptors cb1 cb2 hmm. and long story short it basically means that there are ways of creating that same kind of high naturally that you might get from smoking up right okay now the cb1 cb2 receptors are all over the brain it is useful in every single uh process that the brain does all right now to put it very simply your brain has these cells called neurons each neuron will talk to another neuron right. and transmit information hmm. they will connect across something called synapse so you have neuron 1 neuron 2 and there is a synapse how well the information is transmitted from neuron 1 to neuron 2 is decided partly by the cb receptors okay so in a way when you smoke up the connectivity of your brain changes okay makes sense how those neurons talk to each other change it changes correct okay it becomes slower so some things <laughs> and they laugh a lot yeah some <laughs> things become slower <laughs> um some senses get heightened okay. so your sometimes Face, you smell. can get yeah like so lights can become brighter sounds can become more uh, you might get more sensitivity to sound right and um, your thinking process might change you might become more calm it can also work the other way around yep yeah. yep you can get a as clearly experienced uh, some people can get <laughs> Anxiety attacks yeah. or panic attacks after smoking up yeah. because uh, BT they call it BT yeah it's yeah. a bad trip yeah. uh, so then you can you can get a uh, like an adverse reaction true so it's very subjective and the reason is subjective is because everybody's uh, networks are very different right right and the way that their brain has adjusted their CB receptors are unique to them mm. so you can't really predict. what kind of or what strain will do what to which person mm. right it's very very subjective to that it's funny how it's called anandomide like anand is it, happiness yeah anand yeah. is happiness it's it's come it is derived from that sanskrit yeah. word but how do you you said there are ways to replicate it without consuming any substance so like now what, what do you say like maybe meditation med, yeah. or that's what i think can yeah. think of meditation is the way now I have not experienced it. Hmm. I know about it in theory, and I've read, uh, I've read um, descriptions of people who have achieved that state through meditation and breath work. 
essentially you you calm down your brain to an extent that it no longer reacts to the outside world in a traditional way in a usual way hmm. so deep meditation um particular kinds of breath work done over a long period of time can have that impact i know that to tell people practically that uh, you can experience this from meditation is not is not going to happen because nowadays most people don't really meditate to that extent yeah uh, but it's good to know that it is possible something to aspire to I correct don't know. Yeah. what else did you do in amsterdam <laughs> <laughs> man i've never been to amsterdam <laughs> uh, huh. what all what all did okay. you do local stuff cuz right, you went it. to amsterdam i did yes yeah i did so i did smoke a joint there uh, was it one or was it 10 i don't know <laughs> uh, you can't remember one so that exactly yeah <laughs> and i did uh, i did shrooms mm. oh okay which was also very interesting because um cannabis is not psychedelic yeah so your reality does not really change mm. how you perceive reality can change a bit but what you are seeing what you are hearing still remains the same which is not the case with psychedelics Yeah. Psychedelics alters reality. Right. Mm. So they affect your serotonin receptors. Uh, serotonin is a, a hormone, like a yeah. chemical in the brain yeah. that uh, goes up and down, and it helps you form reality. So <laughs> yeah, I tell you what yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was a very good experience, actually. Um, not promoting anything here. Yeah. Again, very subjective. But um, so there's a there's a park there called Wandel Park in Amsterdam, and it's got beautiful green touch the grass all of that yeah. stuff um i i took a cycle went there put on music had shrooms everything became kind of uh, merged so mm. water body grass so it just became colors for mm. a while the music also helped and after that i did a lot of reading on how does music affect the brain mm. and how does psychedelics affect the brain and yeah. how when you put two and two together the impact can be very different um it was very interesting thankfully i didn't have a negative trip mm -hmm. i know that people have had negative trips people have had very bad negative trips um to a point where they had they needed help yeah. mm -hmm. so not something that i would ever recommend to anyone yeah one interesting thing though is that there is a new movement happening in europe uh where it's called psychedelic assisted psychotherapy papt i think mm -hmm. or paps so psychedelic assisted uh therapy mm. because essentially what is happening is the networks in your brain are getting rewired for a while now that gives you an opportunity to help people get over some traumas that they had right say ptsd mm. now ptsd may one particular core memory has become very negative but what if you can change the way you look at that right so say for example somebody was chased by a dog in childhood mm. they will always be scared of dogs even though I mean, yeah. it's dogs. They're the cutest things. But that person has a PTSD on dogs. What if you can rewire them and stop them from associating the feeling of panic with the sight of a dog? Because mm. right. that's what PTSD is. Yeah. If you can rewire that, that'll be great. That's what therapy tries to do with conversation through writing, all of that. Psychedelics gives you another window. Mm. And so there's a lot of research into how can you use psychedelics? How can you use shrooms? How can you do? I think LSD is what they are researching on the most. Yeah. Um and it's promising. It's a it's an interesting line of inquiry which I'm quite hopeful for to be honest because I feel just because it has gotten a negative uh, um like a connotation around its use as a recreational drug does not mean that if there are medical uses for it we should not even explore it we should not even touch it. Right. So that's that's something that's interesting. Uh yeah, I think with drugs it gets a bit tricky because when you look at it it's one thing that you clearly explain it alters the way you think it alters the brain way your brain works and it makes you experience things that you wouldn't normally experience now if there is a substance that can do that to a degree which is uh harmless to some extent I think it should be thought about and it should it shouldn't be this thing that we completely ban and call it illegal and but at the same time where it gets tricky is that those bad trips that you talk about there are a lot of cases where they go really bad from what I've heard or seen where people yeah. like 
fully lose their sense of reality and they can't like go on about life in a normal yeah. manner anymore yeah so that's where it gets like very weird like how do you go about it 100% yeah. what is ironic is that we are having this conversation in a society where alcohol is legal hmm. yeah wahi pe sab khatam ho jata hai ha why is alcohol legal it has zero positive effects it cannot help in therapy Gets it cannot help in anything anything it's a zero like 100% net negative uh, substance mm-hmm. why is it legal maza aata hai but kabhi kabhi gets you gets you late sometimes right. <laughs> <laughs> net net zero to net zero to nahi no on a physical level i would say yes True, because yeah. there is nothing good that happens yeah. but like i'm sure everyone who has had a drink with their friends no know, knows that it can be a lot of fun yeah it's what do you call a social lubricant it's a bonding yeah. act but alcohol has been like around for centuries right hey, for all these yeah it's always been, been all of them I, yeah. you, if we want to go slightly down the conspiracy path mm-hmm. is like alcohol makes you worse drugs have the potential to make you smarter and better to some extent make you think about things differently and hmm. the people who make laws the people who run countries and governments dim the lights for this one they mm. have a red um, an <laughs> rgb behind <laughs> yeah to get the get yeah the of course feet. no but from like what i've read and what i've seen governments don't necessarily like people to be Very experimenting aware. with Guys, drugs have you heard about the illuminati <laughs> <laughs> are you part of it <laughs> i've said too much <laughs> no but that's what it is alcohol makes you stupid and yeah. that's not a bad thing when because and i don't mean this in a fully negative way like when you're someone who's controlling a country or state or whatever you want to you want people to conform and align and follow the rules and follow the laws mm-hmm. so that it's easier to control a population yeah right my take i don't know if it's that deep mm. i think it's um it's something that is already giving a lot of money yeah the industry is too big too big to yeah. to to ignore right and um whenever there is that much amount of money it is not easy to turn it off there are true because at the end of the day at every level there is a human being Mm. Right. We think about a government. We think about systems. But at the end of the day, it's some human being sitting at some table, trying to decide something. Mm. And there is such a thing as too much money to ignore. Yeah. No, for and sure. So that's. I mean, I think it is that simple. I don't even know if it's about mind control or um, <laughs> like trying to keep a population dumb down the people. Or dumb down the people. Mm-hmm. If anything, I would say TV was that. Mm-hmm. if you have to go down the conspiracy TV was road. to dumb down people it's not dumb down people but just to keep people entertained yeah. try watching a news channel for an mm. hour and you will know that yeah like they're it's trying to make you stupid mm. yeah. um trying to control how people are thinking if you read 1984 it's sort of mm. like all yeah. of that stuff and of course like how else will a message get to the population and if you are controlling the masses, i would yeah, say yeah. Uh, it's not even a conspiracy i mean it's that's sort of practical if i was the leader of a country i would want to get my message across with and more importantly i would believe that it is a right message mm. like i would believe that this is the right way to move forward so it's yeah. not even that i'm a bad person yeah yeah right? um but as for as far as alcohol is concerned i just think there's too much money and the reason i said it's not it's net well. negative is because it only does harm forget the long term even the short term mm. who has woken up with a hangover and thought never again like it's mm. all of us <laughs> um so from that perspective psychedelics do less harm yeah but then mm. at the same time when you're talking about the money it's still the same thing but there's too much money to ignore with drugs also it's just mm. that it's not regulated so mm. you don't know where the money is really going but i'm sure mm. like the the people who are in power they know that this happens they know everyone's doing drugs everyone's yeah. selling and buying drugs and i mean which is why uh, weed is legal now in most countries in the us right and even in the even in europe now more and more countries are legalizing it how many years before it happens in india i <laughs> i think it will happen at some point i don't know how many years 
some youtuber yeah. uh, like one of these travel vloggers ah, okay. and then he was crying because he wasn't getting the care oh. yeah so i think he was supposed to take a what i think he, he, his trip was bad is no, what i'm guessing so he was obviously going through like it like his overall trip or post bang trip post oh. bang trip all right sam pepper uk sam. youtuber okay <laughs> okay pepper attributed his illness to unsanitary prep- so he saw how they made it he filmed okay. all of that and then he's like okay must lag raha hai main try karta hu right and then i think he had too much and, and then the sure. nurse kind of messed up and like he lost a lot of blood oh so he was like that made is, it worse yeah it's yeah. like this is like basic how can you like mess yeah. this up yeah. and he just had a very bad experience yeah, yeah i mean nobody has the right amount of bhang the first time <laughs> yes it's impossible you don't know how do you measure the like, universal story is first glass mein kuch nahi hua तो मैंने तो मैंने और एक लिया फिर भी कुछ नहीं हुआ और थर्ड जब पी रहा था ना तब मुझे रियलाइज हुआ कि फर्स्ट पे रुकना चाहिए था या दिस इज द या दैट्स वन थिंग पीपल डोंट अंडरस्टैंड सो व्हेन यू आर कंज्यूम द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एड बिटवीन लाइक कंज्यूमिंग इट ओरली वर्सेस स्मोकिंग इट या मेक्स अ बिग डिफरेंस या बिकॉज़ योर बॉडी टेक्स इट इन अ डिफरेंट वे या इट्स क्वाइट देयर इज अ लैग या देयर इज अ बफर टाइम बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू आर व्हेन यू स्मोक the the mucosa in your lungs are di- mm-hmm. is directly absorbing it and is sending it to your blood uh, sending it to your brain mm-hmm. so the time difference between the hit mm-hmm. is like maybe 2 to 3 minutes versus half an hour 45 minutes because this one has to go into your gut yeah into your intestine mm-hmm. has to get absorbed into your into the blood has to go to the liver has to go to the heart and then goes to the brain damn so if you know anatomy <laughs> you know yeah. that by now you know you should stop at the first glass <laughs> <laughs> क्वेश्चन <laughs> 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 Do you have any other question that like, <laughs> you will come with? That you might want to get all of us in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that one did just enough. <laughs> yeah, it's the I, right amount. I wanted to talk to you about dating in 2024. Okay. Or mm. just like dating, and it's because I'm seeing a lot of the same things happen to people where like whoever I talk to about dating, they have mm-hmm. the same same similar experiences. And I want to understand like where this is coming from. Mm-hmm. So people have stopped at least in a tier one city and you know we when the social circles that we are in are very similar. So the dating dynamics are similar. Mm. Like people don't go the traditional route where you meet someone and then you meet them for a while and then you get into a relationship and then you're in a relationship now you're exclusive and mm. then you see how it goes and then you either stay together or it doesn't work out and yeah now it's just like you start seeing people but you don't uh, you yeah. don't go past that stage of like seeing them you're sure. seeing them for a very long time yeah. you're not committing you're not giving any You're still open to yeah. you're seeing multiple people also sometimes or sometimes you're not sometimes you're just seeing one person but uh, you mm. let's you don't call it a relationship. relationship don't dare call this a relationship mm. Mm. like that word is has too much weight yeah mm. just commitment in general mm. Mm. so and is that the same as a situationship yeah no. that's what a situation that's what a situation yeah. is Mm. I don't, just don't like saying that word. Why not? Too many I'm people have accused you of stupid word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you got trauma with that word. Like no. PTSD. I'm trying to look like 26. <laughs> When you say words like situationship, will suddenly you're 21, 22. Mm. Oh, like okay. Yeah. You can do it, but you can't though. say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. 
Don't expose them like that. <laughs> People who watch this. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so this is what's happening. Yeah. And this is very common now. Like where people and I think it comes from a place of you don't want to commit to someone because the possibility of Options someone better it. or like someone that you'll get along with more is always out there. Yeah. Because you're constantly going through options on social media. Yeah. Right? Like you're seeing at no point ever in history you had the option of like seeing 20 girls in one day. You can see un you can see infinite number of women yeah. like you can just keep going who you have direct access to yeah yeah like it's a follow or a like or a fire emoji or a dm <laughs> whatever it is yeah yeah like you know they will see what you've said for sure now they will choose to respond or not mm. but never in history have we had that option okay yeah. and it's a very brief moment in history because very soon all of them will be ai mm. you can't even tell who you is really cannot tell real anymore. or who is not there are ai influencers now bro i i have fallen for it a couple of times like i'm scrolling <laughs> reels and like there is a dance reel of this girl is dancing i'm like oh she's cute and yeah. then you go and then <laughs> it's like oh after like a couple of reels you're like oh fa- this is not a real they've made it very like now ai has become so sophisticated earlier they used to yeah, at least yeah. have like six seven fingers now everything is it's the right six, amount of fingers it's the right <laughs> amount of fingers <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think still physical movement is where it's no so they more of face, face now on oh, you the just more of the face the body is the real body uh, mm. that's messed up like they'll just put like celebrities faces on like no, at least celebrity you face. can tell it's a very celebrity unique face you can tell na ki oh there's someone else there are now ai based uh, b roll websites right like if you if you're making a youtube video and you want a particular b roll yeah. and you don't want to go and pay anybody mm. to do it like you can just make your own Yeah, uh, AI B roll. Yeah. So if you've never gone skydiving, mm-hmm. you can make a B roll of you skydiving now. What? There's no, there's no limit to it anymore. Yeah. So even in dating, I'm just wondering if you're scrolling through whatever Tinder, for example, uh, how would you know if that's a real person or not? There's yeah. no way to know. That's but that's always been the case, I feel, because it can even be a dude behind the screen. Sure, but okay. it's so at least a dude. Yeah, we so have reached a stage. You're getting catfished by a human. <laughs> we have reached a stage where we're hoping at least it's a dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least it's a human being. It's a human being. Give yeah. me some contact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, but then this is a uh, this is a double double layered problem. Okay, so number one is for sure. First of all, do you think it's a problem that like people don't want to commit? Yes. Okay. I think it is a problem. Uh the problem is a there is an illusion of choice. Mm. It's not real. Just mm. like you have the illusion of friends or illusion of connection, it's not real. Uh you can only have so many deep connections in your life. Just like that you can only have so many deep romantic attachments or real mm. romantic attachments. Right. Um so you have the illusion of choice. Yeah. So that any kind of illusion is wrong because you will end up making wrong decisions in life based on something that is not true right so if you say if you're hitting it off with somebody and you have a good chemistry going and you like the conversation and if the only thing that is stopping you from exploring what else can happen with this person is the illusion that there might be others out there uh that is that's false like mm. you are making a wrong decision the reason to not be with somebody should be that this person and i are not compatible mm. right number 1 number 2 is everything grows say if you if you're doing a podcast your first episode and your 50th episode is very different and there are decisions that you will make after your 50th episode that you could not have even dreamed of making on your second episode mm. because you didn't know mm. you didn't have those information So um one of the problems of a relationship is that you are you are supposed to make a lifetime choice based on one date. Mm-hmm. Nahi hoga. It is a it is a act of bravery. You when you say commit you are basically committing to being brave with somebody. Yeah. And so you will never even know what it's like to be with somebody for a year. Yeah. So then how are you making decisions for that life? It's a different person you change mm. after one or two years in a relationship. The third thing is लाइफ में बहुत कुछ करना है एंड वी हैव बीन काइंड ऑफ वायर्ड नाउ टू पुट वे टू मच इम्पॉर्टेंस इन टू द डेटिंग सीन 
the truth is that what you want is partnership you want someone with you as you go through life so that you can get all the real shit done mm. you want to work you want to travel you want to explore you want to become a better person all of that and it's easier to do all of that when you have someone with you and if your entire focus becomes finding that somebody that energy is coming from somewhere mm. because you have only limited time and energy yeah so that is the main issue i feel i think people will not reach the full potential that they can reach because they are spending too much time playing this game yeah which is the real risk i feel that is a real loss because these are people of high caliber they can do a lot and whatever it is that they think they're already doing they could do so much more if they can just finish this thing up right right so i completely get that when you are growing up you want to explore all of that great do it but that's not a long term game like eventually you need to do other things and you cannot get to that if you are stuck in this game right. that's my take yeah tell me about you guys so who's dating who's not <laughs> <laughs> see i know i'm not dating for sure all right yeah. okay. and does everybody not. agree yeah other people out there who will be like ha aisa kaisa bol diya nahi nahi for sure i'm for sure not, you're not, not yeah. dating all right. anyone i'm meeting people up sure. seeing new people sure. some people from the past also i see every now and then <laughs> sure <laughs> the past comes back <laughs> yeah sometimes the past comes the back past yeah. comes back to haunt you sometimes but no i'm not seeing any repeat episodes yeah yeah yeah. Sure. yeah i'm not seeing anyone either <laughs> all right yeah i'm seeing same more <laughs> <laughs> i didn't sell it well <laughs> no not at all <laughs> I'm How serious. many people are you not seeing? <laughs> <laughs> How many people don't know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's some water, bro. <laughs> This is a classic. <laughs> He's just gonna be drinking water for <laughs> the rest of the episode now. Apart from scaring your grandma, what else are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. She's fine now. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I'm in this weird place where, um, so. I'm thinking okay I wouldn't mind being with someone I wouldn't mind like working on a relationship yeah like trying to make it work and because that's what a relationship is at the end of the day like there's a lot of work that goes into it okay. and I've been in relationships before so like I've been in long term relationships also so I know the dynamics yeah to some extent but now I'm in this place where I'm like okay there's so much happening in my life yeah I'm doing a lot I'm going to be do- traveling a lot. I'm going to go to new places, new countries, meet new people. I don't know if I want to be like committed to something yeah. where where like my life is so uncertain. I'm waiting for some sort of stability. Stability to be like okay, now I've done this. It's time to Yeah. So, but I don't know if this is right or wrong. I know, I think that's absolutely fair. Hmm. This is absolutely fair because um a relationship is work. Yeah. It's just that if you're in a relationship with somebody uh who aligns with you then it's work that is worth it throughout. Okay. Mm. So it's not like you're working now for some imaginary payoff someday. It's not like that. Yeah. It's worth it throughout. It's even when you're fighting um it's somewhere worth, it's worth in your fight. mind yeah you know it's worth it mm. so what i would say is that if you find yourself speaking to somebody that makes you feel like that that is valuable that right. feeling is valuable then no people say how do you know mm. yeah so you have to really know how you are feeling yeah i really didn't know like the first seven times <laughs> <laughs> Yeah like I used to I I fall in love sure a lot sure now I know it's not real yeah <laughs> yeah it's can I, I a lot of times it's like you are going through those things but you've made this illusion of this person in your head where you've made this ideal version of that person and you see them as that and they're yeah. not actually that yeah oh yeah because you really want this to work out mm. you're like I want this to work out so this person is the best and you like conveniently ignore <laughs> every thing that puts you off or every bad thing mm. 
about that. I think that. that's what the honeymoon phase is. Like yeah, yeah. In any relationship, your first two three months are so rosy that you think that oh, this yeah. is no bigger liar than your brain in love for the first few months. Mm. Yeah, like you can't you can't really see it. It you alters sh- the brain chemistry completely. You just you just you become more risk taking. Mm. So you will take risks that you otherwise would not have. Yeah. Mm. And part of risk taking is. This flag doesn't look that red. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's kind pink. Of. It's pink. <laughs> it's pinkish. At best. <laughs> At best. Yeah. best Valentine's Day color. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> but you learn from it. Then you now I it, I've become very quick to spot. Hmm. Like oh this this is just like an absolute no. Like ye maine dekh liya to nahi. Yeah. Like it, it it ends here. It stops here. I point it out also. Yeah. Like I sometimes it's better to tell the person that you know this is something that I don't yeah appreciate because a lot of times they also may be acting out of yeah like they also don't know what they're doing and then you know what's a green flag for me? Um, someone who can take a pause. If you tell them something, if they can just take a pause and consider what you said. Mm. Even if you've said that, listen, what you said wasn't cool, or when you said this, this, whatever, hurt me, or upset me, or made me angry, or whatever. If they can take a pause and be like, "Yeah, I get that," and then they can defend themselves. Sure, they can put across their point of view because they had a point of view. It's fair that they also say it. But if the reaction is immediate, oh. I feel like, all right. you have not worked on yourself enough and that works for us also like mm. if we find ourselves doing that that's a red flag on us mm. that okay take a pause if somebody is somebody is complaining something it is that something you did upset them yeah take a pause like all right it is possible that you were an asshole yeah, yeah. it's possible yeah. to yeah. hai na yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just take a pause think about it oh maybe i was an asshole defend yourself say what why did you do it but also apologize if you can do that that's a green flag mm. because the idea of perfection the one in you wala right everybody is going to keep growing mm-hmm. you will look back on yourself 3 years ago and think fuck kya yeah. matlab kya yeah. i was such an idiot back then <laughs> yeah. just yesterday it's going to happen <laughs> yesterday <laughs> it's going to happen yeah. so you give others the same uh, what do you call it like consideration yeah right but if they can take a pause it's yeah. a huge green flag because it means they can grow mm. and that's all you need you need somebody who can grow with you and you can make yeah. you grow and you hit the jackpot that's literally yeah. it also your relationship will keep changing so i have been in a relationship with the same girl since i was in 11th standard Damn. so uh we just finished our 9 year anniversary but we've been dating for whatever Ten years before that, and I can say honestly that both she and I have been at least five different people in the last twenty years. Mm. Mm. Because we we are not the same person. Every three four years, we are a different person, and I am a different person. She is a different person, yeah. which means we have to start dating all over again. Damn. So every three years, four years, we will have a big fight, sort of like pent up stuff over three mm. four years. We're like. Why are we together? Because you realize that your dreams have changed and their dreams have changed, and then you have to realign everything again and again. Mm. It keeps happening until you get the hang of it. So now earlier, every time we would have a big fight, I would really question that. Oh, is this meant to be? Uh, is this the right person? And then you kind of realize that if you're not fighting, is the problem. Mm. You will fight. It's yeah. inevitable. But then. You get the hang of that's, it. That's that's what you just said makes so much sense because a lot of times pe- couples fall out because you're like you're not the same person that I started dating. You've become someone else. Yeah. Isn't But the, it would be yeah. weird for me to be the same person after two years? Yeah. Why are you still the same person? Yeah. Have you the learned something? Should not be the same person <laughs> after two years. Yeah. Issue is if you're not communicating your change. Mm. Right. Like if you're still pretending to be that same person and they're still pretending to be the same person they were, oh, problem to होने वाला है ना? Yeah. Can I ask you some very, uh, like a very tangential question? Yeah. Do any of you guys write or journal or whatever? Like just note down thoughts. I I would yeah. I you would, do? Yeah. Uh, have you ever done that as a couple ever with someone? No, no. but I've heard that you should. It's a game changer. Like I, I started doing it maybe like a year ago, 
and uh, it's an absolute game changer so just uh, if you if you have something really important to say if you say think you're going to getting into a fight or if you're already in a fight mm. just take a few hours just sit and write down everything you want to say and let them also do the same thing and then come back and have the same fight and it's completely different but do you all like give each other the sheets to no, read or no 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 <laughs> never do that okay <laughs> no 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 that's all no no what is that's that? armageddon right there yeah. <laughs> never do that it's for you okay mm. it's not for anyone for else for you to gather your thoughts correct yeah. it's just for you to calm down that's what yeah. journaling is you gather your thoughts and put it down right i i can't believe that i spent so many ta- so many years fighting these stupid fights like an animal mm because that's what fights do like yeah. you're an animal mm. just write just write for half an hour come back to that conversation and it's a game changer yeah i think i read Putting about this in that book men are from mars, mars women yeah. from venus mm. i it's an old book but yeah. a lot of the stuff that in that book is also very helpful mm. like i remember i read that when i was going through a rough phase in my relationship and it really helped yeah because it, it, it changed your relationship no it te- it tells you how the way you think as versus, a guy yeah. versus the way she thinks as a girl is very different so yeah. d- don't try to treat her the same way that hmm. or do you think it's outdated yeah it's outdated it's problematic the reason is that i don't find that men and women are very different in their core principles okay because both want safety and both want to grow Mm. like these two things are universal all right the only thing is how do you ask for safety is different mm. and what you consider as growth is different so the way you but the way you communicate is also different yeah, right yeah men suck at communication mm. we really do yeah um there is this sure social pressures some biological pressures some genetic pressure what you saw your dad behave how you saw your dad behave when you were a kid all these things affect us but then we really suck at telling somebody that what you did hurt me right? yeah the line Expressing itself that. sounds weird like say. just saying it out loud Ki, you you cannot. hurt me because we want to portray that i am invincible like what you did cannot hurt me like we're men we're yeah, men yeah right we can't get hurt so but but you do get hurt yeah and so you've got to process that hurt some way and you got to show it in some way i feel that women are much more comfortable both getting uh, or accepting that they are hurt and telling you that you hurt them is mm. that why we think that they complain a lot correct mm. so i don't think they it's not that they don't they complain more i think we complain less we don't less. complain enough we don't complain enough but i still like this is now this is a argument that i've had countless times mm-hmm. where she's telling me you don't tell me how you feel and you don't <laughs> if you're going through your something feelings. just tell me yeah. so that i know but then i don't want to complain yeah. like because you're for us we're very solu- solution oriented yeah. so if i'm complaining i expect a solution mm. but you're not giving me that there is no yeah. you can't solve these problems for me so what's the point of complaining yeah so then my middle ground was i'll tell you that listen i'm not i'm not feeling too good so like i you know just space. yeah give me some yeah. space or like if i'm snap if i snap just know that there is stuff going on but for them it's just like tell me what's yeah. going on which is pretty fair man uh, bro but as a guy it's you don't want to yeah, yeah. paise nahi hai ye nahi hai wo nahi like, like saying, as a guy you don't those want things those to things. your like compa- whoever your partner like yeah. i don't know if it's it makes you feel less hmm. it makes you feel less also you sure. don't want to burden them with your problems it's not which is another bro. as thing. a guy you want to be the man you want to be the you guy. want to be like, the yeah the bigger person you. i will bring security yeah. to this relationship and you take too much on yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no it is a it's a social thing also um i used to think that if i am not complaining i am doing something that is good for the relationship hmm. like hmm. i'm i'm making the relationship less dramatic mm-hmm. that's what i used to think of it i think I, i used to think of this as drama right the weirdest thing is when you complain or when you express the relationship gets better and it's this strange thing because i would have loved it if my wife didn't complain yeah <laughs> who wouldn't <laughs> right yeah i would have loved it mm-hmm. if she was just fucking logical and rational yeah. and she would just be like uh this is what you said this is how i felt and this is how i dealt with it let's go for dinner mm. oof 
मजा आ जाता एंड सो आई आई एक्सपेक्टेड दैट इफ दैट इज माई आइडियल वर्जन लेट मी बी दैट सो दैट एटलीस्ट वन ऑफ इज बिहेविंग आइडियली बट दैट इज नॉट हर आइडियल वर्जन राइट हर आइडियल वर्जन इज If I am feeling something, my partner deserves to know it. And if I am not expressing what I am feeling, say if for mm-hmm. her she is thinking that his Siddharth is not telling me what he is feeling, is he not that close to me? Mm. Right. And so she is taking it personally. <laughs> so when I started complaining, things got better. Damn. What do you? I mean, make of that what you will. Like, yeah. say, yeah. what do you do with this? Yeah. Don't think about it as complaining. It's communication. It's communication. Yeah. So one thing I would say is again, write it down, and literally just go and say it. That right. this is these are all the things in my mind. Don't solve anything, but these are all the things in my mind. And you watch your relationship get better. It's a hack. Next one. Boys, <laughs> complain. <laughs> I'm getting in one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Need to test the <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Complain. Message her right now. <laughs> yeah. Complain like you. Like don't don't pretend to be anybody else. But complain like you would complain. And just write it down and just say it. Mm. These are all the things going on. And let her handle it. Mm. Fair. Fair. And if she's not going to help, ठीक है ना वैसे भी you are not going to tell her anyway. Yeah. But what if it gets better? What if your life gets better after it? Yeah. It's yeah, a win-win. It's worth a try. For Absolutely, sure. go for <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, you should also try it. Just <laughs> <laughs> whatever you are. Whatever is going on here. Like you know, पानी पिलाया. इसको पानी चाहिए. I don't know why this oh, conversation only seems to be with three of us, and he's no, just I'm like, just, nee, nee. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm taking love. it in. Taking it in. Saying <laughs> 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 away no one right now. <laughs> His relationship has taken a turn. <laughs> oh wow! Okay then. You actually, want water? Or? Yeah, I generally oh. want water. I, I was thinking you were going down a spiritual path, but I think you're going on a different path. All right. Another thing that I think guys are scared of a bit is if you've been in a couple of relationships and gotten out of them together. No, no, like <laughs> just <laughs> in life. All right. Uh, you have this fear of maybe what if I start seeing someone and then what if I'm dating them and I lose interest. Mm. Okay, that's a scary feeling to have, like because you don't want to put. It's having to break up with someone. Oh, is like it's brutal. It's the worst thing. Mm. That's why so many people just let it drag until it just fades on its own. Yeah. So like this fear of what if I lose interest like after a year that of being with this person and also for a lot of people they take that as betrayal like, you wasted a year of my life mm. you used me yeah like you all all, you, all sorts of sure yeah like, like it you sure. wasted one year of my life I didn't know we were like investing here like I didn't know this was <laughs> <Yeah>. an investment <laughs> that mm. you were I thought we were trying this out together yeah. you know yeah. Mm. ऐसा नहीं है कि मेरा इंटेंशन अलग था और तेरा था कुछ और एंड आई थॉट वी वर डूइंग दिस टुगेदर एंड नाउ इट हैज एन वर्कड आउट या व्हाट डू व्हाट डू वी डू इट्स साउंड्स लाइक अ वेरी क्लासिक कम्युनिकेशन गैप हियर इन जनरल आई थिंक वी आर नॉट गुड विद हार्ड कॉन्वर्जेशंस राइट सो आई हैड दिस थॉट द अदर डे वी शुड प्रैक्टिस दिस दैट सिट डाउन आई हैव समथिंग टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट एंड दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी इजी just saying this hmm. with somebody should be a practiced thing i don't think we can do this we don't do hmm. this so we would rather that things simmer and come to a blast at some point or just die down naturally yeah without us having to take this step but the reason that we don't take this step is because we are not comfortable saying this line so we should just practice this with our friends also because a uh, very often our friends will have trouble with us we might have a fight going on with our friend and we don't know how to confront we don't Bring know how it to up solve or, it yeah. correct so if your friend was annoying you just practice this line that bro said i have something to tell you it's not going to be easy mm. Mm. setting that stage gets easier after you do it two times mm. so again one advantage of being in a relationship for a longer time is you get a hang of these things because every few months you need to have a hard conversation right. something about kuch na kuch to aata hai life mein and you need to sit and talk to them 
But if you're not used to that hard conversations, you will just keep letting things drag on. And I would say that having that hard conversation is so much more, um, it's so much better for them also. You will waste so much more time if you don't have that conversation. Yeah. The problem with that is if it's a fight, it's okay. But when you're breaking up with someone, it's like you don't decide overnight that you're going to break sure. up with someone. If you're losing interest, you're losing interest over time. And mm. what that does is make you behave differently. And what that does is make the other person be on edge. Like you get colder, you distance yourself off slowly. Yeah. And then bit by bit. when you go reach the place where you're like, sit down, I want to have a, they know what's coming. Yeah. And we so, gotta go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah, not go dinner. to a public not place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And have lime juice. <laughs> the, no alcohol. No alcohol. Yeah. The problem is that this is because we are not brave. Mm. Like mm. if you're losing interest, the Should brave thing to do is to say that. Like as soon as you feel. Correct. But, but then but also there's in relationships, there are phases where you lose interest and then you're like, you come back and you're like, okay, uh, you sure. know what? There's the it relationships go hot and cold. Like even the healthy ones, like you'll have a phase where you're really into your partner, and then mm. there's a phase where you're more into yourself, doing your thing. Huh. So in that space, how much are you communicating? It it doesn't need much. The mm. thing is that relationships don't need too much communication. It just needs honest communication. They just mm. need to know that this is what is going on. And more importantly, sort of most importantly, you need to care what they think. <laughs> yeah. So if you're in a real wow. relationship, <laughs> you care what they think. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, so that, I think what's happening it. here yeah. is you. Maybe you don't care enough. Really that yeah, yeah, you don't mm. care what they think. Mm. You care what their opinion of you would be in the long term when they right. talk to their you're friends. Like, it's, yeah. Mm. Ko, like, kya hi farak or not even their friends like I don't want to be a bad person sure. mm. in front of anyone or Got in it. anyone's but head it's still so a very like, social thing it's not about you and her, her. Yeah, it's not, yeah. so if you care about what that person thinks you will not be an asshole yeah. you would just be like this is not working out or no more likely what you would say is this is not working out can we try something else yeah. That they would start be the seeing other people. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Can we try other people? <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> but at least you got a solution, right? Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> I, no, but I, I don't I don't mean to make this sound like, oh, these solutions are so obvious, why aren't you thinking about it? Because it's come after yours to you. No, not even that. It can only come after yeah. you've been through this. Yeah. There is no other way. Again, mm. we are not taught all this. And these are some things that I don't think you can be taught. Um, you you can't lo learn all this from a textbook. You still have to kind of go through it. Mm. The only thing I would say is writing helps. Right. Because it's difficult to be honest with yourself. Mm. It's very difficult. You think you know what you want, but you don't. Yeah. You think you know what you feel, but you don't. It's, it's one of the brain's defense mechanisms so that you can continue with your life. If you have all these emotions and you are constantly aware of all of them, you will get paralyzed. Mm. So you pack it in and so that you can continue doing podcasts and all yeah. of that and still find jokes and stuff. Yeah. The only way for you to know is to write it. Is it the case when you write and you're being dishonest, it's it's easier to call out because it's on paper yeah, in front of you. you and if you're if you've written a lie it's way more obvious and way more difficult to deal with than lying to yourself in your head even if you lie on paper it'll help hmm. because lying to yourself is a very weird thing because not all your lies have words right they're feelings they're just thoughts they're yeah. just feelings yeah you will end up lying to yourself without even realizing that you've lied to yourself. But as soon as you commit a lie on paper, you can see it. Mm. And then they'll be like, this doesn't look right. Like, this is not me. Mm. And at least it'll make you, it'll force you to confront that lie. Right. Otherwise, it would have just gone. Yeah, it's a mm. fart yeah. in the wind. <laughs> fart in the wind, yeah. 
one thing I noticed is that's a Shawshank Shawshank or a pee in the pool I mean yeah it's just noise but that you can spot like if you're I was saying ki one thing I observed while writing things down if you want if you think about lying to yourself when on paper you stop very quickly yeah. you you catch it then only mai kya likh raha hu like why am i doing this especially if nobody else is going to see that book mm-hmm. yeah so write get a notebook keep it in your drawer lock it nobody's going to see it ever in mm. your whole life you you can burn it out you could can you type it out also is that but that's just still an interesting thing typing ka i used to try it out there is an advantage to writing because we all end up typing way faster than we can write on pen and paper mm. okay so just the act of writing gives your brain a little bit more time to form oh. the thoughts mm. so simply the restri- the resistance of pen on paper will just give you those mm. few milliseconds more and that's all your brain needs for that thought to form whereas when you're typing yeah. half your time is just going in typing and then there'll be some correction so then you have to delete yeah. type it again right. it's also easier to correct yourself when you're typing correct and everything is in straight lines it's already coming out as organized whereas when you are writing as you keep writing you will find yourself writing something cutting it writing something else but that cut thing is also valuable yeah because right. you can see what you originally thought mm-hmm. yeah you will find yourself making arrows yeah Okay so hypothetically there are three people that you're talking to and you've written down those names <laughs> and then you've circled one you've put a cross on the other these are all valuable ways in which your brain is communicating with itself yeah, yeah. you can't do that in a note uh, like when you're typing allow yourself the medium Physical. to know what you th- what you're thinking mm. it's again senses like you said correct which we come back to correct the truth is yeah. we don't know what we are thinking yeah. so there's no other way So how can you expect your partner to know what you're thinking? It's close to impossible. Like a relationship between two people who don't journal is very difficult. A relationship between two people who journal is much easier. So first journal and B find a partner who journals. Mm. Relationship or just hack. ask them to do it for you. Or just ask them. If they mm. are ready to do it for you that's a sign that That's a sign. Yeah. That's a green flag. Mm-hmm. Should nice. add that to your Hinge bio. <laughs> Yeah. Let's journal I together. Let's talk about put it on his bio. <laughs> Boy, man who journals. <laughs> I know it. I know it. With a green flag you emoji right next to it. You, you've given him some tools today to no, practice. No, but for real like, this is like this is all good advice. Bro, this is great like, advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's more though. There's more I want to like get into because yeah. I know a lot of people watch this and we get a lot of DMs. Sure. they like talk about this talk about that which is yeah. great cuz it tells you what people want to hear yeah yeah so now let's say you've done all these things you've had the confrontation you've broken up or you've been broken up with a lot of people have a very difficult time dealing with a breakup and moving on from yeah. like an ex oh oh yeah so should so, you should you block someone after <laughs> a relationship or should you what's the what's the point in um if blocking. it if it uh, helps you move on from that person correct so you have things to do in life yeah right you had things to do before you met them also yeah that has not changed so now if having this person in your periphery what's the word uh orbiting Mm. Mm. I read oh. about this somewhere. So it's like the extension of ghosting, which is orbiting. Like there is this one person yeah, yeah, yeah. who's um, who is not pleasant for you to have around anymore, but they're still existing in your space. Hmm. Maybe you go to the same college. Maybe college. You go to the same. You have the same friends. Same circle somewhere. Circles. Yeah. Or okay. they keep popping up digitally. Yeah. Somewhere you see their stories. They're a content them. creator. They're like, a content creator. <laughs> They're, they're on, on a, a podcast. podcast. They're on a podcast. Oh, oh, oh. You have to see their face. Their reels are quite okay. popular. Talk about <laughs> breaking up <laughs> yeah. on reels and acting all innocent. <laughs> <laughs> like this fucker. <laughs> People don't know. People don't know. <laughs> People don't know his real side. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. You can block. Mm. I feel like. Uh, we tend to think about digital actions in the same weight as we consider as uh, consider non digital actions blocking somebody in real life is like coming up to them's like 
मुझे तेरा चेहरा नहीं देखना है अभी इसके बाद से हैविंग दैट कन्फेंटेशन विच इज़ अ बिग थिंग इन सोशल सेटिंग्स ब्लॉकिंग इज नॉट दैट ब्लॉकिंग इज जस्ट लाइक दिस इज योर हाउस एंड यू डोंट वॉन्ट समबडी इन योर हाउस इज ब्लॉक इट्स फाइन इट्स नॉट इट्स नॉट रूड इट्स नॉट आई हैव स्टॉप्ड ओवर थिंकिंग ब्लॉकिंग बिकॉज यू हैव टू क्यूरेट योर डिजिटल स्पेस योर मेंटल हेल्थ इज इम्पॉर्टेंट If there is somebody popping up who you don't want constantly in your memory, block them. Mm. There will be a time when they don't bother you anymore. Unblock them. It's that simple. Don't overthink. What is more important is that you go back to your identity mm. that you had before this person was in your life, or you move on. You grow up. Uh, the problem with a breakup is that for a brief amount of time you think that this one person is a part of you. Mm. That's what love is. You don't have access to them anymore, right. so it feels bad. It feels like bad. Love. It's like a constant reminder that remember you had this mm. person. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have this person anymore. <laughs> you don't want that. Yeah. Like you want to remind yourself that life is great just by yourself. Yeah. That's what recovery from a breakup is like. So yeah, absolutely. Block the shit out of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's it's also like a lot of people when <coughs> they have gone through that, uh, they have the urge of reaching out mm. because they're like, I have all these feelings that I can't make sense of, and mm. there these feelings about this person. So the only person who can help me with this is that person. So let me go back and say this is how I'm feeling. You mean But, go back to an ex? Yeah. Okay. Even if you're not getting back together, you want to reach out and text them. It's comfortable. And, yeah, uh, it's also mm. comfortable. Like mm. you are craving that feeling, and you, if the la- communication line is open, if you've not been blocked or you haven't blocked, you can send that text. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of times you will get a reaction. It may not be the reaction that you want, but in that moment you're just craving a reaction something. from that person. Like yeah. give me something. Yeah. It's like yeah. calling up your dealer when <laughs> <laughs> you've quit. <laughs> He's still in Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think it's important to like fight that urge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Resist it. Any any sort of ambiguity takes cognitive effort. Like mm-hmm. if you're not sure, uh, then it takes effort on your part, and it's taking that energy from somewhere. It's mm-hmm. taking your time and attention away from somewhere. Yeah. So if you've decided that you're not going to be together. just leaving that door open takes cognitive effort i'm not saying it's good or bad but just remember that it takes effort it's mm. not coming for free mm. and that effort of keeping that open keeping that uh that connection in limbo mm. is not for free yeah you have to constantly put in time and energy into keeping it there so if it's worth it for you then sure but i find that it's easier to just make a clean break and move on to whatever else you want to do in life mm. right right so i can understand that people find comfort in somebody and even if you've broken up you can still find that comfort and there are couples of broken up and remained great friends i know couples who attended each other's weddings just someone was feeling healthy. bad i'm sure of course but hopefully both of them are i mean i know that both of them are in better places mm. sometimes you just know that you are not compatible as a couple right yeah mm. right, very right, often right. yes there will be there will be two people who are great as friends and that feeling can transcend into physical attraction because there's something about them that appeal to you right mm. uh something about them that made you feel like i want this person in my life now we don't have too many choices True. of how do we keep somebody in your life mm. so if somebody is so special that you want to ensure that they never leave your life the first go to Uh, idea that we get is let's date them, mm. yeah. and if that goes wrong, you end up losing them. Yeah, but it was never meant to be that in the first place. Mm. You are just trying to make sure that this person doesn't leave your life. Right. So if you are in a healthy communication pattern, then you can de-escalate it and realize that great, we tried dating. Clearly, that's a bad idea. But does that mean that we are not awesome people yet? Mm. And then can we figure out some other way? Mm. It takes a lot of communication. mostly with yourself honestly yeah. that's the other way around also where there is someone who's just so attractive and you're so attracted to each other that you think this has to work out and sure. then you go through it uh, the relationship like doesn't work but mm. you're still attracted to them so that i think that's what leads to 
people like hooking up Just even hooking after up. breaking up all right even cheating i feel like that's that's a similar yeah yeah i mean that all all attraction is basically your brain just giving that dopamine spike of anticipation ki are chal chal maza aa jayega and how much of uh self control do you have to modulate that attraction mm. if there isn't any then every time you get that urge you will want to reach out you'll want that kick ultimately that's what it is because you're not building anything with them there's no yeah. long that ship has sailed ha huh. there's there's no say you you were together physically 10 times in a month is that going to have any positive impact on your life 2 years later mm. nothing right it's only in the moment it's only in the moment so it's like having an ice cream it's in the moment hopefully it won't do harm mm. um but it's not like it's a- adding anything to your long term growth so there are lots of things that we do in life which are only for the moment yeah all your limbic system all your uh short bursts of pleasure come from those actions not wrong but you should call it for what it is yeah don't get confused with something that you're using to build something long term use your prefrontal cortex yes nice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see again you're so proud of so him for a big him. word so proud of <laughs> sample size prefrontal cortex limbic system <laughs> <laughs> all right guys what's How long does this podcast usually go? <laughs> we, we can sit here and talk all day. No, we just like, talk but, until we feel like. Yeah. But honestly, lately yeah. we've so we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. And now I think we've gotten better at conversation. Mm. So episodes have become longer. Longer, yeah. Ah. And now it the at the point we end it is we're like okay like I know we can sit down and talk to mm. for two three more hours. Yeah. But it's just like. <laughs> like we'll have you back on again. Yeah, yeah my yeah, only thing hopefully. is I have I have that's what I was checking the watch for because I have OPD in one and a half hours. Okay, so sure. I would yeah, need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Call it here. Chill out for a bit. Yeah. But, <laughs> ah, okay, no. But I think we have a lot to talk about, yeah. so we'd love to have yeah. you back sure, on. Yeah, sure, man. This was really fun. Same for. I'd yeah. love to know more about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll switch up the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. That's the <laughs> before right, your guys. OPD, we'll give you a camera. But thank you so much for yeah, coming. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Absolutely, my pleasure. We were really looking forward. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Glad it happened. What yeah. other topics, bro? We covered yeah. today from whales to <laughs> relationships to yeah. everything. Yeah. I know. We've come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, thank you for yeah. doing this. My pleasure, man. And yeah. great job. What you've thank done you. is really, thank really you. amazing. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, man. Fun. Oof. That time, bro.